Wholeness. Yeah, it's Wholeness 7. Hey, dear brother. Hey, how's it going? I was actually checking out the show, of course, as always, man. Y'all doing your thing over there. I know about those technical difficulties, though. Don't worry about it. It happens to me every time these days. I get in the studio, everything's all unhooked and stuff, and I'll be like, okay, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's good to hear from you again, once again, man. Oh, I man, definitely, yes. definitely. Yeah. We've not got Rosalind Blue with us this evening. As I said, she might be coming in a bit later on, but we've got our young brother, Saeed. We're one of the young soldiers coming up also. I mean, it's part of the resistance, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we've got him in the house this evening with us. For sure. So, I know we're going to get a lot out today because someone came with questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people with questions. Yeah, these... um, As Saeed, I mean, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah. Um, hello, Sam. My name is Saeed. And um, I've been checking out a um, few videos of you, and it's... Um, that's some uh, profound knowledge, to be honest, you know. So um, I'm not sure. I know you can delve into many topics. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I just um, let you decide. You see. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we can we can get into the show, and then you know, whenever you want to, whenever you want to chime in, just. You know, go into it because, like I said, you know, we can really build something massive. I always tell people in the beginning it's like a train, so it goes a little slow, sure, yeah. and then you know, everyone's just dancing around the conversation, still trying to get used to being live and on air and with all these electronics hanging around, like they're you know, spooky electronics hanging all around. But uh, you know, then once you you know, you get out of that phase, and then it just starts flowing. And because there's a lot here, I mean, realistically, I, I can really, really give a deep level of information and a very expansive level of information about what's taking place not only in this realities, but a few realities adjacent to this one. I mean, that's obviously what I'm here to do. I listened to one guy uh, that's been doing um, his, his own message for 20 years. And man, if you understand how much data this dude was popping off, you would have to be 20 years into something to be able to go that deep into it. And so also what I will tell people is that, you know, I've only been really publicly speaking to people about experiences that have been taking place all my life for about three to four years now, I would say. And um, so there's still that, that somewhat of a learning curve. But realistically, it's not something that you have to actually um, study or, or attempt to perform. It's if you're the truth, then you should be able to, to identify with the truth and to be able to find it and extract it from anywhere. So that's really what we're going to talk about today. It's not going to necessarily need the super complex individuals, all, although we got them covered too. It's really yeah. about making sure it's clear so that a person doesn't really have to go by what you say. They can see the redundification of it in the reality. And that, of course, is, is highly uh, dependent upon what topics we actually talk about in most people's conversation when they're giving information, but not so with me. If I'm explaining something to you, you can actually ask me, what is the mental level of that? What is the spiritual level and what is the physical level? Because this is a core system that you can use within diagnosing everything on this reality to make sure that you're getting the actual truth. But if you only use one of them, you'll get a very unbalanced truth. Meaning if you only mentally see how things work, or in this case, because you're in this reality, if you only spiritually see how things work, and then if you only physically see how things work, this is going to be create an imbalance and create some yeah. type of distortion. So, you know, so that, you know, we can get into anything really in this conversation. Of course, I'm on day seven of a fast, so I'm super clear we actually uh, just recently went on. There's about 20 of us doing it at the same time, a whole body uh, cleansing. It's not just a fast. It's actually a cleansing. And we're utilizing uh, this knowledge and information about actually getting the organs clean so that way they can you know, start playing harmonic because that's really what's necessary to jump off major powers and major manifestation. Mm -hmm. So what, 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 what is your diet um, entailing at the moment? Or are you not eating at all? No, actually, what we're doing is we're taking, uh, it's really a supplement that's apple juice and organic psyllium hulls and ginger okay. and a few other things. And what that's doing is just, just going right in onto the uh, the colon and scrubbing the walls and, and cleaning it out. But it gives you some level of substance because psyllium hulls kind of expand. So it, you don't really feel as hungry. It's not as aggressive as some of those fasts where you just start fasting and then you're super toxic and then there's nothing to move the toxins except for you just drinking water. Mm -hmm. um, which often doesn't work because the quality of water that we're drinking is not really water for the body. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, chlorine. And the body's like, I only can do so much with chlorine. I need real water. But, you know, that's yeah. another conversation. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so the, the psyllium husk, because I've got some of that in my cupboard, unopened, of course. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually waiting for the right time to um, to, to take that, and uh, this is perfect timing to speak to you on and, and talking about the body, yeah. and um, how the industry is also against the body, because not many people would have heard of um, the things like psyllium husk. Yeah, man, I mean, that's actually the start of these notes today that I have set aside for this particular conversation that we were going to have on our Vive show, which is that people need to understand, like, I'm just going to go, I can metamorphosize into different characters, by the way, we are capable of doing it, but today's show, I'm not going to be playing the radio with these folks, meaning that I'm not going to be here with tissue gloves on about what taking place because it's actually holding this all up like the expansion yeah. transition already took place and like i'm here to let everyone know that what's happening is we're being held up and it's from all sides we are literally under attack by big business i mean i'm not gonna hold anything back today about the information of what exactly is taking place and what is necessary for you to to get yourself out of the web and uh and so that's it you know that that's the really the uh the thing about Today, so everyone, that's like the disclaimer of today's conversation. Yep, yep. <laughs> so, so, your seatbelt, so to speak. Hey. Exactly. Like, I mean, it's not a game. So here it is. <laughs> but yep, yep. Re realistically, okay, of course, we're under attack by big business in every sense because, as you see, there are group, there are groups of individuals that make large amounts of currency, like large amounts of money. We'll just take it on the physical level first. And many of those individuals are part of organizations that, like the Jews, they shop with each other. Meaning, That's like, right. if you're a Mason, you're going to shop with the Mason. So, of course, big business, for anyone who can't see beyond that, is going to be the game that those individuals that can't get above 33 degrees, meaning 33 degrees of their spine, they're, that's as far. They only get as a, a third, it's as high as they can raise their Kundalini, is what's being said. So... Mm -hmm. When you're dealing with these kind of organizations and they're actually using big business to fuel them, they're using currency or money because currency or money buys them the same, somewhat of the, the same kind of what you would call spiritual pleasures. You see what I mean? So what you're dealing with is, is that you have first, of course, the food industry. Now, they do, there was just a recent movie that was called Branded. It was a UK movie, yeah. I believe. Oh, no, actually yeah. a Russian movie, excuse me. And they, that guy also did another movie, and it's really on the same tune where they, you know, they show you just some esoteric kind of way of showing you what big industry is doing, especially the food industry. And the mm. food industry is just under the simple gun of this. If they can get you to come back and buy it again, then they've succeeded. They don't consider the health thing at all. Everyone knows this. But what people don't know is this type of chemicals that are necessary for you to keep coming back. Because generally, if you notice, when you eat anything, even if it's a good meal, let's say you cook fish and you eat that same fish for like, you know, two, three weeks, maybe three months for some people. After a while, you're tired of that fish, right? You don't mm -hmm. want to see that fish again. Yeah. So why is it that people can go for years to McDonald's? You see what I mean? People are not asking themselves the real question. The question is answered because it's the chemicals that are in there. So we'll leave the food industry. We'll go now to church, the temple. Mm -hmm which is basically an external version of the physical body. The temple, of course, being in, inside the head, the seat of the, of the soul in itself, which is the temporal lobe. Okay, that whole region is why the word temple comes into existence. But now you have these externalized temples. And it is a business. Their goal is they have to sell an external God. They cannot empower you. So that area is covered. Then you go into the hospital. Now, the medical industry doesn't get paid off of killing everyone. If everyone was healed, then there would be no sick people, so there would be no need for a hospital. That means all the beds, all the doctors, all the education, all the syringes, all the plastic. People don't see it's big business in there beyond just the, uh, the pharmaceuticals. Okay? Then, so that puts the hospital on the list. Now go to the education. It's a university. There's tuitions, there's deans, there's professors, there's books, there's writing, there's experiments. There's all of these different things that a university was set up for, especially from the decrees of Germany to get in touch with the children more than the parents. But there's so much going on in university, they love to keep you there for t 10, 12 years. And then you finally get out and whatever you are learning, you can't even utilize. <laughs> they're like, you're, you're outdated. You were trained on outdated equipment. We're sorry. You were away from the learning curve while you were inside of that institution. You see what I mean? Because it's all really an experiment from the level of these, they're not controllers. 
Like, people, like I even I've made the error in calling the, the controllers or so-called controllers that I moved to before. But now I'm realizing you have to be 100% responsible for what you're doing if you're to gain any level on uh, any level of, of of magnificent power. You need to be 100% responsible for what you're experiencing and realize that it is your fault if you're at that stage of consciousness. Now we can talk about other stages of consciousness where you don't make it spiritually to the age of knowing. Meaning that spiritually what you're looking at in any, uh, uh, let's say again, these individuals in the reality causing a lot of negativity. If you're on that level, you have not yet really graduated to the expanded level that most people are really on. Meaning that most people that you see around you can naturally engage in a feeling of love. Okay? So... When you take a control, uh, uh, I gotta find a new name for these guys, but when you take, we'll just use a so-called controller. You take a so-called controller, they can't feel this type of emotion because they desensitize themselves. If this yeah. is the same as a deer hunter. If you take a deer hunter, he shoots a deer, he's not gonna, he may even feel a little joy from shooting a deer. But you take an animal activist and put them there, they're gonna feel like, like on powder, they're gonna fall apart. Right. So this is because one person is desensitized me and that chakra and that center has been calibrated in a certain way to make them not feel certain emotions when they do certain things. Mm -hmm. So this will also lead you to the key to why this reality is going to metamorphosize into a higher level anyway, a more harmonic level. And it's because the energy that is coming through now and many people are radiating is actually going to make the cancer of this world, which is the Jesuits, the Illuminati, the Masons, etc., become regenerated, right? This is, they're going to regenerate and actually gain feeling again. So that when they go to carry out what they're going to do next, they start feeling like, oh my goodness, I can't do this. Now remember, this is a sense, long, a sense that has been long dead within them. Now, to, to get into how I discovered this is a massive, a massive adventure in itself. It actually takes you through the beginning. Like, I, I think I'm the, one of the most dualistic people on the planet in the beginning of this, this uh, path. Because my actual opponent was God. But I rose as an opponent to God from being friends with God. And this is different from most people's perspectives. Most people can talk about gods and, and all these different things, and they never had even experienced before. But what I'm talking about, what I actually experience within going into higher levels of vibratory frequencies using the mantras that are given to you within church. Mm. You see what I mean? Like people are not aware of exactly what is going on, but we're getting aware. And this is a part of it. Like me disclosing the information about the step by step, not only the Jehovian or uh, Yahweh Metatron kingdoms from Orion, not only the Venusian base park right outside drawing a pentagram in the sky, <laughs> not only the, the, uh, the man's receptacle, the moon, meaning the, the actual celestial body that's holding the seed, the regenerative force. See, all of this is what we call realm dynamics. What it is is being able to have a compass to where you are so that way, because you're like a sphere and you're a counter-rotating sphere, you can actually gain bearing. Because if you can imagine what's happening to you now, you see how the earth spirals, right? I mean, the earth is on this, this, uh, this, this circle, and then it's on a wobble. And then you also have, you're spiraling through space, right? So, and then you're stuck to the ground with gravity. What I'm trying to show you is, is that your orientation would be off anyway if you weren't in a balanced vehicle. And so because the human body, the reason why you know it's not balanced is because you primarily use one hand, right? There's most people are right-handed. So that's the sign of imbalance. So what happens is, is that in us realizing that, and this is what the ancient mysteries before this new stuff came along, which is relatively new the last four or 5,000 years uh, that, that you've been getting this new level of information, which is garbage. But before that, most of these energy principles and knowledge that I'm teaching was strictly about the relationship that you had with this planet. And that's what people need to see is that the adventure was actually this planet. There is so much here that we are not seeing like the trees for what they really are. The elements, the elementals, the crystals, the essences, the energies, all those things have been like locked up in a storage cabinet and then we're running around here playing with droid. 
uh, artificial life form waiting to be engaged. <laughs> you see what I mean? And but, what, and but that's a big part of the lesson though. Like I'm not here to tell people, oh my goodness, we're all doomed. In fact, the way the system moves, you will continue expanding anyway. See, the soul doesn't, the way it became a soul was it didn't do the good evil thing. It saw all as expansion. <laughs> what, when you become body identified, that's when you actually start feeling pain. Mm. And that's what we need to, to lock in on because the body is calculated based on phi. Now, when they finally bring phi out in a two dimension, it's a pentagram. 72 <laughs> points times five is 360 points, 360 degrees, excuse me. And that gives you a circle. It's a two dimensional version of a sphere. So this is why you see pentagrams everywhere, because it was a symbol that meant if you understood this, then you understood the first level of knowledge about what's going on here on Earth. Because if you look in the etymology, you'll find phi is connected to fighting and combustion. This is where you get the term universe, united but in conflict. That's what it's saying. So the only being that is united but in conflict is what you're calling the human because inside the body you have the heart, you got the liver, you got the kidney, you got all these different parts and the, surely the heart is not the liver. <laughs> you see what I mean? If you understand how your body is alive but these parts are doing different things but guess what? They're in one body. So this is another thing that's happening in this reality is, is that we're being utilized by suggestion as a footstool, more or less, to entities who are trying to boost themselves up to higher levels of reality on top of us. And this actually is an inversion, by the way, because even to do such things doesn't allow you to access higher frequencies. So what they're actually doing is attempting to lower, every, lower everyone's frequency so that they appear higher than us. So that's the game. So let's, let's start firing off these questions. You know, any part of this, you know, from the realm dynamics, metaphysical, you know, spiritual, the different parts of the world, different occurrences in history, you know, all of that can be discussed now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so are these entities who are trying to claim a, a higher position than ourselves, and what, what and who are they? Well, there are different factions. Really what it is, it's a part of ourself on the past part of the timeline, meaning that once you start letting these entities run around outside of you claiming that there's reptilians and insectilians and what I just call the template, all these opposing forces, then you never consume them, meaning that they actually become an opponent because they're not inside of you, they're outside of you. So what they are, though, is parts of us in the primordial timeline. That's why most of them correspond to things like alligators. Still stuck in the, that one part. They, and remember, if you watch Mario Brothers, you'll see there's a, uh, a de-evolution de gun. <laughs> okay? What a de-evolution gun is, is when you play around in a physical reality and you start becoming so physically identified that your spirit no longer is fed. So that way, when it leaves the body, it only can find a vessel or another body, animal body, whatever, that is corresponding to the actual level that it is on. So to make it simple, simple, if you act like a dog, don't be surprised if you come back as a dog because realistically you don't have enough soul force to become a human. See, people are not seeing that. We haven't even learned how to become human, yet now we want to become gods? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's error all over this. So mm -hmm. the reality is, is to just make the correction because once you make the correction, then your projection is, is where it needs to, it, it's going to actually make its trip successfully. Remember, anytime you're taking off a vessel, a ship, you need to have projection. Like you need to know exactly where you're going and you need to chart that course. And this is why I'm talking about integers that you can use to chart your course so that you can see exactly what you're, what you're, where you're going, basically. This is, this is what's needed because you're in a vehicle. Of course, you're not the body, but the body has its own state of consciousness, too. It was learning from us. Just like all the other animals, as you see in the ancient books in nature, they say the animals were learning and then we were instructing and teaching them. Mm -hmm. And then, again, the schism, and that's what, what, you know, the question leads to when you ask, well, who is this force? Okay, now, this force, oh my goodness, this is, are you sure you want to get into this now? Like, it was, yeah. I mean, like we can go, okay, so this force that's in cool. itself, so, uh, so you to understand why it is the way it is, that's the first thing, when I, before I introduce this, this mm -hmm. character. 
It is the way it is because it was born outside of the womb. Meaning that it, in a sense of what you know is organic, is inorganic because it was not born in the womb of heat and warmth and, okay. ap- and, and, and tomatoes and, and cats and furry creatures and all of that. It was not born here. So thus, our behavior, just like how your mother trained you, is subject to our planet. What we experienced here, what we ate, all of that controlled our evolution for a great period of time and did very well. So the opposing entity has not been born inside of our mother, which is why it carries on as such. Now, if you understand that whoever wrote anything about human rights these days obviously could not be human. You would not write such laws, rules, decrees, and edicts such as the judicial systems and the punishment systems, the medical treatment systems, etc., and be of any type of human species and actually be okay with that. You see what I mean? So what actually happens, though, is something that was talked about in ancient times ever since the sands of Arabia, which was possession. And this is why there's another component to big business, as I called it earlier today. And that component is, is that when you bind yourself, as they call a fasci, which is the, the actual axe with several sticks, when you bind yourself or make packs or oaks, oaths with individuals, you become a part of what could be called a covenant. Mm. And so you have these individuals who first, it started off cool. It's like the guy that you knew that could rap. <laughs> And then once he got put on, his character began to metamorphosize. We got plenty of these now. And then it seems that this, as if this metamorphosis, you know, was nothing like the character, even if you knew the character. Like I used to live in Atlanta, so I know a lot of the people that are now in the industry. And many of them, such as Akon, was nothing like that before they got in the industry. So what this tells us is, is that, of course, it's beyond. It, it, it's in a sense the greed, but people are not seeing, just like the ancients used to see, greed was a certain energy. It came from somewhere. And when it creeped on you, you needed to understand how to resist it. That's why all mystery teachings talk about that there is a whisperer. It, it's too low for our words, so it appears as if it is talking in your mind, and it suggests things. But if you were a master of the universe, a center of the world master, as they call them now, this means you were master of your own body, the center of the world or earth. And so you could easily decipher whether it was your thoughts or a thoughts of how many other things are actually talking to us. Think about this. Radio is broadcasting right now all stations. So there's talking going on and singing and everything. But why can't you hear it if it's actually there? See, some people think they can't hear it. Right? No, what happened is, is that just like the refrigerator in your house, after a while, you can't hear it, but unplug it and see how things feel in the house. It's totally quiet now. You didn't even realize that the, frequ- the frequency was playing. So it's the same thing with all the other frequencies. It doesn't mean that they are not intersecting with us. They have to because it's a grid. So the reality is, is that there's a level of firewall. A lot of the firewall is just knowing. But there's a firewall that comes up around the human. This is where the human's magnetic field is, is, is pushing out. Okay? So what it's actually doing is it's creating a buffer. Actually, it's going out and in, by the way. It's, it's in and out. It's actually a torus. So it's creating this buffer that's strong enough to repel these kind of signals from the brain. And this doesn't mean you won't get cell, cell, cell phone reception just, just because you have this high frequency. Now we're talking about two totally different wavelengths. But what we are talking about is that the impure, which is what was, it was called, and I'll explain why, was not allowed to interface with the pure. And this is a frequency spectrum, though. This is nothing about what these church people are running, about, running around talking about. This was the layers, as we're talking about phi in a shell, these were the layers that separated dimensions and frequencies. Mm-hmm. And so if you wanted to travel through them, though, which is where we've actually gotten at this point, we're not just one of those layers and just unconscious of ourselves in an instinctual mode. We're actually fully breathing, thinking, and actually can ascend and descend the ladder. So in that case, you would then start to uh, grasp, of course, where you are and the knowledge of what's around you. And here is the actual uh, benefit. You didn't leave yourself without the ship. Meaning that you did not abandon yourself on this planet being controlled by who knows what and all is lost. 
you are actually inside of the vehicle that can power up and then subsequently, because all of them are the same, power up all of the rest of the vehicles. This is like, now some people have a awake higher self, by the way. We won't, we're talking about different dynamics here, but there is people who have a awake higher self or oversoul. It's connected directly to them, it is them. But some people have fell asleep across multiple planes. You may find them sunk in Kashmir in 450 BC as some uh, uh, chief of an Arabian suck. You see what I mean? You'll find that individual still inside, though. This is what people are not seeing. Every time you. Uh, we birth, we're only bringing another part of ourselves, just like a seed from a tree, out into the reality. So yeah. when you keep bringing back the reality, and this is just mathematics, it has nothing to do with hocus pocus and magic, but you go to your father's father, then his grandfather, then his great great grandfather, you keep going back, you get less and less people. And then eventually you'll get to a tribe. Eventually you'll probably get to a garden. <laughs> It's not so uh, far off that it cannot happen. You see what I mean? If you just understand how life comes about. But then that means that in that garden, and we'll give it that term, all of us were there. And this is why all of the things that take place in the reality, we're still directly responsible for if we've got to the age of knowing. Now, the age of knowing, and why I keep saying that, is that obviously you see that there's people running around the dimension that have dipped so far below the frequency of consciousness that even if you explain this stuff to them in, in a tea and you gave them everything sitting on the, uh, on the shelf, they would be like, folk, I don't even want that. <laughs> I'm not even trying to eat that, man. Get that out of my way. You see what I mean? There's a whole other dynamic that you'll deal with, right? So what was the solution for that guy, though? Did you just leave him behind? No. Anyone that was actually really coming with the truth really didn't even need to do no talking and bring no gadgets or nothing either because there was an energy system coming off of that individual that will break off shells off that individual because what you're seeing when an individual is in a dense state of consciousness is shells have actually formed around them see all of these individuals were still originally from the originator the soul force so don't look at an individual and act like they don't contain greatness they would even be walking around if they didn't but the thing is, is that many shells have built themselves up around this individual's greatness. Now, if you can crack through those shells right then, the person will just start crying and everything, and, and it'll be from that point they change. But if you can't, then you're not a good bridge builder. And this yeah. is the other thing about if you want to survive in this galaxy, you need to get a job, just like anywhere else. And bridge builders have the highest position if you want to do the higher and lower thing in the universe, meaning that someone has to to extend this organism. So this is by you being able to be in certain frequencies and atmosphere without losing your frequency. <laughs> like you have to hold. And then what you'll watch then is harmonics, meaning that it's somewhat painful at times for lower frequencies to start to harmonize with higher frequencies. This is just like even going on a fast on a physical level is painful to not eat. But then what happens is there's this harmonic point. <coughs> And that harmonic point is what we're actually searching for with most individuals, meaning that our, our mission here, if there's a mission, and I always say stuff like this because the, the words are all crazy these days. Of course, that's another big part of my work. But I have to use words that people understand. So the mission is to simply raise the individual to one harmonic above where they are now, one octave above where they are now. And you can cause the entire scale itself, especially if you're working from the bottom, to begin its rise. It's almost like unsticking a motor. Once the energy starts to move, even from the dense regions, then the whole thing, the ones who've been feeling like they've been held up, will actually be able to move and pull the rest of the load. Because what you're still dealing with here is you're talking about when you want to find your demigod, when you want to find your diva, you'll find them in that holy wood. You will find the individuals that are pulling so much star power and attraction that they become the real kebab, the real anchor. Like an anchor to a person's soul, meaning that look how many people Justin Bieber's got out there acting crazy, yeah. right? Now, he's an anchor, though. He's also a Jaken and Boaz. See, the, real, the realization of what's happening in this world, though, is the etymology is so interwoven into everyone who is capable of doing things. It's literally like looking at the, the, the uh, alphabetical correspondence to genes. So if you can, eat, if you can 
somehow make sense of it, because it is Babel, by the way. If you can somehow make sense of the Babel, you can actually put together something in this reality. This is like the puzzle or the riddle of the reality. You're using a language that you don't even understand what you're saying. So right off the bat, it's going to become somewhat of a challenge in the beginning anyway, from a certain level of expansion. So this is why I speak to a level of saying, hey, it's a challenge. There's a riddle here because it's not like I'm in a spaceship broadcasting this to you <laughs> and, or, or you're in the ship with me and we've never been through this. You see what I mean? So the reality is that we need to know what to do, when to do, how to do it. And then we already know now is the time. And so however long it takes me to walk through, walk through that with people, then that's how long it is that I'll reside here. But I will tell people, the fact is, is that, again, the expansion already happened. It's in simple things, the things that are free. That's what it kind of boiled down to. Like, honestly, to tell you the truth, your first thing is free is air. If you understand how to breathe, you can self-substantiate. You can pull pranic energy and you can live off that stuff for a long time. There's a lot of people that have done it already. It's not a big mystery. The second thing is water. You need to understand, it's so many parts per million. I did a video about it. It's on uh, youngbody.org if somebody wants to tune into it. But well, there's some videos there about us going through the cleansing. But realistically, that's not water that you're drinking. What's happening is, because of this though, to be very simple, is if I tell you, hey man, we need to wash this floor. And then you bring me water with, let's just say, only red dye. And the red dye is maybe not even a lot. But I cannot clean this floor because this floor is going to look like red dye. So this is what happens when individuals are drinking the water. They're drinking something with so many different chemicals and chlorines and things. And the body's like, I can't do anything with this, really. I only can, you know, do certain things. So this is, of course, why we talked about the distilled water. You get zero parts per million. Tap water, 300 parts per million. You got particles running everywhere, fluoride and things that are building up everywhere. So what happens is that if they can get us to neglect the ship, then we're shipwrecked. See, yeah. this, this, they're like sirens screaming on the shore of a very beautiful looking place until you run above ground on Peter's Rock. <laughs> and what's happening also is that most of us, I cracked this in another show, but it's something I'm not sure if you were able to catch that show, but the origins of humanity in the ocean. The origins of what we're thinking space is and what's really in the ocean and why it's only 5% of the ocean has been supposedly discovered. The entities that reside there have huge mass, huge brains. In sal saline water, look what the ocean is, complete saline water. Any type of mental energy you're going to push out, you push out through there. Especially if you have the refractor, which is the, the, uh, the moon. So what do they tell you in just regular school? The moon controls the waves. It controls the waves because of the magnetic attraction. Okay, you can't get magnetic attraction in tap water. <laughs> it doesn't work. That's why they tell you in a battery, don't put tap water in a battery. You got to put distilled water. Because distilled water is the only water that can hold a charge. So why is it any different from the body? So when you go for the body, especially since it can hold a charge, but when you go look on the internet, distilled water is bad for you. It's only for irons. The reason why they need you to put in irons, because when you put tap water in an iron, it becomes so calcified, the iron stops working and starts spitting those little white particles all over your clothes that you hate. So, but that's okay to be in the body though, right? So again, the whole thing is buffoonery because what you have is a league, a league of goons. They want to be extraordinary gentlemen. Like if you see, that's one of their movies, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. But if you notice the new Wizard of Oz, he says, I don't want to just be a good man. I want to be a great man like Thomas yeah. Edison. <laughs> you see, this kind of behavior being tolerated by basically full-blown light forms is just really ridiculous. Meaning that the essence of what we need to tap into becomes the reason why we do it. It's a reward system. If we're sitting back here waiting on something major to jump before we actually activate it, it already jump. Meaning that they, think of these other people that need your spiritual help in order to expand because what's on top of them is too heavy. Look at how many tents you see. If you touch the UNHCR, this is the United Nations uh, uh, broadcasting channel where they show you what they're doing or faking like they're doing. So in the tents, hundreds of thousands of people just in tents in the hot desert. You see what I mean? They don't have a future. You see what I mean? Like they can't project to a future. Someone has to build the future for them. Like somebody said, they're dying daily. That's also why one needs to come that can keep projecting. And what I mean by one needs to come, it's multiple people. 
It's people here now that are already starting to build the future that we're li I'm living in personally, but it has to be a bridge to where people are to this level of harmonics. Because realistically, like I was telling everyone, and I, I don't say it much, but I'm not going through problems, issues, and situations. But it's because I raised my Kundalini be above my navel. Mm -hmm. And it's, th it's there. It's above my navel. You can actually physically see it. So, th but, so what happens is you're now no longer, your seed is now no longer under the dominion of the Diaboli, which is, of course, the root chakra, Baal, the bowels. Mm -hmm the stinky bacteria or Bacchus. You see, what they did with the English is they put all of the riddle there because they are riddlers. They love the black and white joker gesture. The king that wears the crown is also the clown. These are all the same words, of course. But, but you know, what do you got? What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> well, you said that the, 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 the kundal, you can actually physically see your Kundalini. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. You can you can you can you can physically you can physically see the kundalini because for a man the kundalini is actually his semen. What happens is is that the whole knowledge of kundalini. And that's why it's just interesting to watch these people keep playing around. If you go to and pick up any real Eastern book on this topic, you'll find that they'll tell you almost in the beginning. Look, here's the here's what happened. Every time you expel your seed, because that's your fruit externally it can give life if you put it in the right womb it can give physical life but if you don't it will create a succubus an inception or an incubus meaning that it's an idea <laughs> it's an idea of life and it's come now into still a womb because the entire reality is still you know, it's, the entire reality is still water. It's just levels of the water, the humidity, as they say it. So what I'm telling you is, is that basically when the man ejaculates the semen and is not using it to create life, he's basically replicating his death on such a deep level that it actually affects the entire body. And his resurrection is only to bring his, his semen. Now remember, sea man. Okay, this is an ocean. Yeah. And now you need to bring it up and that's called he's risen and it's three days because there's really the three the three sections 33 33 33 and then at that final point bam you're in the crown and then hopefully if things went well it will come back down you see what i mean like people are stuck with this raising cuddling in the brain like they again didn't read the books man there is no level of dangers that can be continuously told to a person about bringing the impurity into the holiest of holies this is how it was termed back in the old days meaning that if somehow through breathing methods and different things that they teach in some of these tantra schools that the people are still not tapped in but they're trying to unlock the power then they end up rising the kundalini into the brain it's like a bubbling in the brain the person is literally opened up to all spectrums but can't close them this appears like madness <laughs> this is what the book says so what happens is the base of the person opens up the crown chakra but doesn't be, doesn't know how to uh, uh, what you call um, distinguish this is um, I'm looking for a key word here it's actually um, discern okay so discerning is basically the same thing I mentioned earlier being able to know who's talking to you so that way you can phase out certain frequencies that always come in at a certain level. And that, that level is basically what they're saying. If something always suggests to you to eat the wrong thing, then you got it identified. So you can tag its frequency and then you always know when that frequency is coming in again. So the same thing is happening on this, um, oh geez, I kind of lost the state of thought here, but I'll get to it in a minute. But what I'm basically trying to explain to everyone is that you have this system that it has to rotate. Like the Kundalini must go up and go down because when it goes up, it actually collects the seeds, the ideas, etc. And then when it goes back down, it distributes those seeds into the soil, which is your hearth or root chakra. Now, the only thing that you're dealing with, because remember, if you say that the root chakra is the evil one, this means because you're dealing with the inverted root chakra. This is what's, what's the symbol of the inverted pentagram with the horns, okay? Right. So what this means is, is that the only thing that these societies have really been doing is they take the na laws from nature, et cetera, and they just turn it upside down. And that's, they create synthetics, okay? Fake things, fake celestial bodies, et cetera. 
fake stars. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. So now what you're dealing with is, is that, of course, you can get your root chakra into a shape where it's a magnificent creature. We'll just call it that. Because once it starts to spin, it generates the heat and the hearth that's necessary to burn up the impurities that the body is always making. And this is, of course, how you see your body. All of the food you drink, you stuff in your mouth. But who's got to do the processing? <laughs> the organs lower. This is how you also see how this whole thing is set up in this universe about those who are on the higher level, those who are on the lower level. If you really want to see it, it's in the body. When you eat, the mouth gets the pleasure. <laughs> While the organs are the ones that got to toil with the pleasure now. So what happens though is that if, you, if everyone is working harmonic, you never put in anything into the mouth that actually causes the bowels a problem to digest. And then the mouth and the bowels are now in agreement, and so they're capable of generating energy. So do you see all of these agreements that these people are talking about with these external entities were really agreements that we needed to make inside with our internal self. And understanding, like, so then the mouth becomes happy to receive something that is going to make the bowels pleasant. Because if the bowels are not pleasant, then you have an attitude, you're angry, you can't think clear. Most of your brain tissue is in your stomach. It's not in your head. Look on the internet, they show you the stomach has so much brain tissue wrapped all around it. But again, this is why when they put, show the picture of Satan, they show, on the Catholic depiction, they show Satan in the stomach. Because when Baal, their Lord Baal, Bell, is in the stomach, he is suggesting you should eat this, you should do this. And then he, he also reigns over the urges. This is why if you drink wine, you feel like you want to go have sexual relations because everything below the stomach is really uh, uh, is, is in service of the stomach. This is what I want you to see. So you can see how this microcosmic body really works. So everything in service of the stomach, the stomach tells the legs, you get up and go, we're going somewhere. Now, of course, the mind is always divided. It's like, no, I don't think we should go. <laughs> you see, so when you see your body, don't see it as just one thing. Because there's millions of just bacteria running around on their own frequency. Forget if they can talk. Some people think the only thing that's conscious is stuff that can talk English. It's actually vice versa. The reality is, is that when it's carrying a frequency, so if you get too much candida you're in your system, which comes from all the yeast and corn syrups, etc., candida is going to be broadcasting a message all the time, just like a baby saying, feed me. Now, this is a basic message for all organisms. It, they say, feed me first or second in there after breath. Okay, so when you get a lot of candida, the only signal, I'm saying it again, especially during the full moon, that they're sending is, feed me. So now what happens is, is that because what they're doing is they're exercising the basic life principle, survival. That's what we're also not seeing that when you get just, just because you got too many of a certain kind of entity in you because you didn't understand balance, it doesn't necessarily make it that entity's fault for attempting to survive because it doesn't even understand symbiote. See, and that's what I was talking about, this level of knowing. Symbiotic is the individual that understands how the entire system works together. It'll happen internally before it ever happens externally. A vampire, of course, is one who feeds on the host without ever replenishing the host. This is why, of course, the world is seen now to, becoming, to be becoming vampiric. And this gets us into Venus. This gets us into why Venus itself as a planet, if, which is supposed to be, is upside down. This gets you into upside down birth, meaning that when you get individuals coming into what appears to be a very happy world, but not being able to live that kind of life. So, you know, we won't get, a, we won't get too far off a topic here, but, uh, you know, what kind of questions you got? Um, could you um, tell me a bit about um, past life regressions? Sure. What's going on is, is that inside of the base of your spine, in your cossacks, which is where your tail used to be on the human body before it was domesticated out, that yeah. there is three, three bones in the cossacks that is where the, the kundalini is seated. What the kundalini is carrying is it's actually carrying a disc, discs like Tron. That's only, the only explanation I can give you. On, on Tron, remember that the disc was the, your entire thing in that world. If you didn't have a disc, then you had no identity. 
So what happens is, is that there are discs in our spine that actually carry the information of all of our subsequent existences. And again, this is no different than going to your grandmother, grandmother, mother, grandmother, mother. But this time, you actually get to see it from all the different perspectives of the eyes that we're looking at it. Okay? So this is what a past life regression is, is when a person actually gets themselves to a state where they bring up, if not a bit of that information, possibly a whole disk of information on themselves, and they start to see themselves into the, pla the past life, uh, into the, their biorhythm of past life. Now, grab a mirror. And this is always even, because you can go to past lives and things in dreams, but to authenticate. Because remember, there are... Because life is so complex, if you understand just a little bit about things like the acacia tree, you can already project into hyperdimensional levels. It doesn't mean that you'll stay, sustain yourself there very well, but it means that there is a hyper level of life that is here on the planet. So you also have to keep that in consideration with everything that you're doing. Don't act like you're going to be the first one to ever do something. And so this is, uh, this is also the word of caution about when you're working on astral projection and you're working in that arena, you have to practice astral hygiene. Astral hygiene is when that you make sure that your area is carrying no Tao and no uh, negative magnetic systems, meaning bad CDs. That's, a, that's basically a neg negative magnetic disc. DVD. D is a triangle. Another D is a triangle. And then the V connects these triangles. That makes that Star of David that you see. It's also, when you see a DVD, it looks like a disc, right? That disc is a flying saucer. The, the, what they would say is the flying saucer of Metatron, which is, in our Bible, in our text, Jehovah. So it's, it's down to a science of what is going on as far as the other wavelengths, the vibrations, etc. There's someone here that already knows about this. So basically keep aware of that because your intentions is actually what guides you beyond their sphere. And this, of course, is also what happens to a lot of individuals that get involved in spiritual practices is they never make it beyond Metatron, now Yahweh. They, they are always limited to even the Buddhism, even the Hinduism. All of these are just fractions of the truth. If you understand the truth, you understand that the person that you're talking to is going to point you within. They're not going to send you in riddles and parables. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to take a long time to figure out someone else's riddle and parable. In addition to that, anything in between you and you is only a hindrance. <laughs> because really the ultimate source, of course, is you. So what happens because all is self. Like, I'm not talking about some people say, oh, this is blasphemy. No. In the totality of all things in which we all originated from, then all is self. End of the story. All that's going on in life is just our period in which we come into the full realization of that. In this space, there is no talking because there is no one to hear. You see what I mean? There's no conversation, again, because who are you talking to? And that's what people need to see what's going on in their mind. You're talking to this guy like, yo, you ready to go to work? Man, I don't want to go to work today. Who are all these people you're talking to? So what's really happening, though, is that this is the frequencies then turned into, um, the frequencies turned into, you interpreted it, just like you see the dream. You interpreted what you see. So when you feel something, like something that's saying, I'm hungry, you interpret that as you need to go get food. So this is how we can identify, and like I said, the easiest way is to send bow. Like, to tell you the truth, from all of the, the knowledge that I've studied, especially about even the lords of this plane, lowered, look at the term means to be brought down, okay, is he's bowel. So in your intestines, there's this wall of what's called mucoid plaque. This is all the pus and all of the, uh, the mucus that comes from all this stuff that we're consuming. That's where it's re a lot of it's really made out of. So what happens is, is that this builds up on, over the intestinal walls like a shield. Now, remember how I told you that this area could be used to bring you into the highest state of advancement? That because if it's starting to create its own heat and its hurt, when it gets all clogged up and this stuff gets around the walls, which has been happening since you were drinking Similac with iron, then it sticks there and then the, the bowels don't vibrate anymore. So they become very low density. Now, then this is what also happens. This layer of mucoid plaque builds up continuously. It's almost like a, a, a slip and slide. But when the food comes down it, it slides down it, and then some of it just a little gets lodged to the walls every time you eat. And then it solidifies very easy, and then it keeps growing. And then in the depths of this mucoid plaque is nothing but bad bacteria for the body, the worms. So 
this is the place that the worm must die. This is the area where you must understand the difference between the good harmonic bacteria for your body versus, you know, KFC chicken McNuggets from seven years ago, <laughs> you know, still stuck in the, 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 tupper, the upper uh, right <laughs> intestine. You see what I mean? And, and it's, um, it's one of those things also that when you pass it, because a lot of people are starting to ask me about, you know, how does this all connect to their real currency in the real world? When you pass it, you go into a higher vibration, just like you pass the test. So that's why I said it's a reward system. When, when the higher vibratory frequency begins to occur, the individual actually radiates that frequency, thus causing all the things in its environment to actually become harmonic with it, even if it means the individual moves from the environment. It's a law of the universe. There's nothing that can be around frequencies that there's no level or bridge or harmony there. So that's, you know, that's one of the keys. I'm not sure if uh, everyone's still in line. I heard things get a little quiet for a minute. Okay, 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 great. So, uh, so, 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 sorry, seven. So, so the process is about cleaning the whole shit, really, isn't it? Yeah, man. Because realistically, this is what happened. If we're if we're basically the ones that we're supposed to be paying attention to, and then everything in the reality has us diverted to everything else, then you see the play. So then what happens is, is that when you glance back at yourself, you'll see mentally, spiritually, physically, you've been basically shipwrecked. They're still they're feeding on your carcass like vultures. <laughs> your yeah. mind is constantly being drilled every day with false data. The, the body is constantly being embedded all day. The intake of the body is horrible, toxic. And then the uh, soul is definitely stagnant. See, the problem with the soul when a soul occurs, a problem is because it can't move. That's why the soul always like the symbol of being free. Right? So what part of freedom do you feel? The soul feels like it's pinned. Now remember I told you the pentagram and phi is the pin, serpent. This is where also the serpent component comes in because serpent is a primordial state of mind. It's basically before we expanded. So those who actually start acting like we haven't expanded become like reptilians, but in human form. You see what I mean? So they play you like there's, and there may be, I won't disclaim it altogether, but, but, they want, but it, it's not as important if you just explain any, to a person, anyone can be a, a, a reptile, anyone can shapeshift into a bear, like anyone can act like a dog, but and the reason why we can do it so well is because we were already that. <laughs> But what we're talking about now is can, are we actually smart enough to create what we are to become next? And so that's why a lot of looking back into the past and trying to figure out what's going on with the zoomorphication and the pyramid or the prism or the prison, it was, remember, they were really celebrating when they got out of Egypt and they went and fell into the same trap again. <laughs> I'm not laughing about it, but the reality is it's so crazy out here. You can literally emancipate yourself from a situation and end up falling back into it again if you yeah. don't stay awake. It's your own responsibility. That's the other thing. If you leave it on someone else, it's almost like the universe's default mechanism to start making chain reactions happen so that way you start to self-substantiate. It's literally like a parent that when it sees you starting to not grow, it's like, okay, let's start session five, six, six, send in Centaurus, send in Aldebaran, send in Regal. Let's get this thing cranked up. You see what I mean? Because the whole goal here is to get you to become a universe and then to be fully conscious of that and not want to fall back asleep. Now, there are some here that their story is, is that they got to that level. And then it was so immense for them that they decided to go to sleep. And then when you go to sleep, generally you project yourself into a lower density body that should be safe. You can only determine how safe it's going to be because you put it in a hole. <laughs> Again, it's not only sexual, it's also natural in nature. That this, the earth is always penetrated by the rays of the celestial bodies. When those rays come into the ocean first, the ocean is what begins to give them life in the covenant, which is known as salt. Which, of course, if you look at salt on a cellular level, is a cube. So you understand why salt became known as a symbol of the womb. In fact, the ancient name for the vagina was saltus. So what happens is, is that there is a connection because woman is carrying the external version of a womb, which is, makes her more in connected, connected with nature. However, man also is created with the other pole that when those two come together, it creates the energy right there through friction. Now notice... All fire is generated through friction. You must either strike a match 
or put two opposing chemicals or something of that nature. So do you see why also nature was connected with the conflict? Because if you didn't take a look in the outback or if you didn't go on safari, you still got animals running themselves down. See, this is what they say the corruption of the ways because there was a time in which certain things like that didn't take place because they're basically watching us. You see what I mean? All lower life forms watch the higher life form just like we look up to quote unquote God. But guess what? Yeah. It, we already reached a phase where, actually, excuse me, let me put that right. When we began this, we were already in the phase where there was nothing to look up to, only in. <laughs> So you can also see where the adventure became when we wanted to go out, bringing things from inside of us into three-dimensional realities. If you understand the geometry, you understand that what is all in this physical reality that you're looking at was taken directly from the inside of the human. All the synthetics that were created here were plagiarized from nature. All the satellite dishes, satellite dishes your ear. Crystal, there was no powerful crystal like the pineal. Like there's no, nothing that the synthetics have created that have ever been anything that we didn't have. But remember, the synthetics journey in its own self is to attempt to create an illusion, a false world that people will accept over the real one. And that's why, of course, you look at the great and powerful Oz. He actually says it multiple times. I, I, I can win this by creating an illusion. <laughs> So the illusion is definitely here. Like, I guess it's not something that we can see. Well, where is it at? It's intricate. If you can't see it, that's because it's accomplished itself. But the illusion is when you get groups of men, and I have to put this back on the men because they far outnumber in many tenses as far as the organizations that are destroying the planet, the women. But if you really want to know the internal quarrel, there's an inverted level of all of this. It's called the shadow or the shade world. It's Shaddai. The beyond the looking glass, as they call it. And in this world, everything is inverted because it separated itself from light. And if you understand, what we are is we are a composition of light, but only in this level of distortion. If you, get, if you draw closer to it, you get more closer to its perfection. So what happens is, is that those who want to identify with Nocturne or Cthulhu or the nighttime side of everything, the wolf, the owl, etc., those are the ones that want to be the furthest away from light so that they're not exposed. Okay? So where they are on the energy spectrum is just how they see. Far infrared. All these creatures see far infrared. So that's why your dog and your cat is aware of different energies that come around and the hair stand up and then you feel something and then you know, you know something's going on but you can't see it. But they can see it. So the reality is, is that we are here existing but we also have this thing that's telling us, look, you have to watch yourself around here. Because there are other entities on this dimension that came into knowledge that they are wholly abusing. And now they've leagued with each other. And that's why when you see the prophecies, the prophecies are, of course, for profit. And the prophecies are always carried out to do like the Georgia Guidestones are saying that they're going to do. But the key word is try to do. <laughs> try. Yeah. Because it, it cannot succeed. You cannot destroy something that is immortal. The planet has already created beings that are more advanced than the synthetics. They're still trying to catch up. That's why they have to keep us in this sleep-like phase because it blows out all of these different devices when one activates. Yeah. So, you know, there's a major thing that's actually happening. But, and this is what I want to tell people also. So a lot of people are in fear that if the system starts breaking apart, then there'll be this phase where everything will go to chaos. No. This is, you didn't understand what was happening. You didn't see what the purpose of the eye on top of the pyramid being removed was about. Meaning that that's a t that's when they remove the eye, it becomes a trapezoid. So, and that's the system that they're dealing with. So let me to explain it to you very simple. You have to see that when these, how these individuals' idealism is, is that the one on top has to serve, the one below has to serve the one on top. Okay? When all of our symbiotic cycles work with everyone serving each other, you see what I mean? It's all in service. Like, why would I want to do damage to my liver? <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. look at what's happening, though. When you go in a bar, you wham, wham, you hit a couple of shots and blah, blah, blah. Like, now you're at war with the liver. So don't be surprised if the liver attacks back on all levels. Because the liver is also an existing life form that's being abused. Now, remember, now let's skip the subject here a little bit because you've got to get into the seat of life. Remember when they said that what seemed to be the whole situation between these two characters, Adam and Eve, was their procreation itself? <laughs> Basically, and, but that procreation seemed to come from something that was giving them the knowledge, and they call that the serpent. 
meaning that it's the knowledge of the tree, the knowledge of the tree of life, meaning the knowledge of how to create life. And then, right, we create life and didn't even know what we were doing. <laughs> then we bought, begot Cain first, right? See, that's what the book says. If you want to just go by the book. Sure. Now, remember, millions of people are on the Abrahamic tradition, so I suggest people will start at least understanding the complete template and how it works. But what happens is, is that if something in the beginning says, let there be light, it means it wasn't light. After all, if you're light, why do you need light? <laughs> So there's a huge play on the human spiritual stance, and that's also where the biggest, the biggest control point took place first. But now it's on the physical level because if the person becomes body identified, then the spirit can become trapped to a certain extent in the body. And let me explain this. Let's say, for instance, you live this entire life just imagine your body. You don't even know that you're actually a spirit. The spirit has not grown any. So now, when the body dies, because the spirit has not gone into any progression, the spirit actually starts to haunt the body. It just stays there, like it's tethered to the body. And so this is what is seen often on the astral plane when you find all these people that are lost because they went through this world without having any real truth. Truth is light. Truth is a light from within, though. It means that wherever you go in the abyss, you're carrying your own light. So all dark things move back, just like when you turn a light on in a room, all the darkness retreats to the corner. And that's also why humans need to understand their vibratory frequency is already so high, that's why they must depress the environment in order to somehow have some type of control over it. But they have to hide because on a spiritual level, you in front of them is like a flaming light in front of them just the vehicle that we're in. So, you know, it's interesting when you, can, when you can look at it from multiple dynamics, you can really, you know, go to sleep to, to amazing dreams on the physical world with it, and then that will actually lead you to the proper lucid dreaming, because that was a big part of that question today, but I think we answered that question before on the last show, but I wanted to take people deeper into it. This lucid dreaming is a launch pad. You have to be able to take off properly when you actually or, or about to go to sleep. That's your takeoff, obviously. <laughs> Look, it's funny, like we call it going to sleep and it's actually about to be the takeoff. <laughs> so really what's happened is for takeoff, you're like, systems check, <laughs> modulators, water systems go, air quality is great. <laughs> See what I mean? You gotta get ready to take off because here's the reward of taking off. You can actually get to the point where you can restructure the future and pull the frequency back into this environment. It's not something that we can't do. Like, it's just amazing to me. And what happens, though, is generally, if you can bring up the level of energy that's capable of doing that, you understand, one, the injustice of bringing any type of living life form into a reality that has already not been perfected. Meaning that we're talking organics. Some people think they just want to bring cars into the reality. They didn't get it. They want to sign up with the synthetics. See, the only thing that we could ever hope to bring here are children that are activated. You see what I mean? I could be children to take their whole situation, no problem. But we spend so much time sending all our projection back into the same thing that's really causing a great deal of problem because it's just a tool. Money is a tool. It's just loot. So what happens to the person is, well, I just want prosperity. Well, prosperity actually comes also because I told you the woman is tied into this. We're all tied together. We're yoked together. So if she's abundant, then everything's going to be abundant. But if she's barren... And everyone, and she's got the mind state that, and we're into something else now, but she's got the mind state and saying, I don't even want to have a baby. You see, that's already saying, I don't want to bring a seed. I don't want to have abundance. So that's why there's another thing cloaked in this that makes us not want to bring forth children. Because when we bring that star force, real star force, into this reality, especially if the individuals that bought that into the reality have configured it properly, then it already starts bringing them the abundance from the time of conception because guess what? It's your tree to curate. And that's why I say it's easier to look at this like trees and that's why we, were, we have such a major connection with trees. If you look into this occult thing, you'll see in every degree there's a tree for the, for the degree because the tree was the teacher. The tree were different elements and things that carried in liquid form at times or powder form knowledge and information from another wavelength. So, you know, I won't um, get long winded about that. But yeah, man, I mean, it's, uh, you can obviously see how something can be a term from what would appear to be a nightmare to a fantastic adventure, which is what I've done with it. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so Lisa Treeman, so, so in order to um, have a, a safe takeoff, um, a smooth journey with a, with, a, with a smooth landing, 
we have to clean the whole system the organs, the liver, and so forth. It, right, and, and, let, and let me explain why. Have you ever been in a dream where it feels like you can't even move through the reality? It's like so dense that you're having a hard time even walking, okay? Yeah. This is because you've managed to astral project, but you astral projected where you were supposed to go, which is the frequency that you're actually on. And then, so it's like a sludge you're moving through. It's too dense. So mm -hmm. what happens is, is that the density controls your ability to control. When you're ethereal, because you're actually controlling everything, even the next breath you take, you're thinking about that and making sure you take it in good enough and you know that it's, you understand the real power and importance behind breath every time you yeah. breathe. So what happens with that is that it's, it, it's capable then of projecting you into where you need to go. So it's, it's, a, um, it's a big thing about how um, our densities, how we're aware of the density in our body and how that affects how aware we are of what we're doing when we're quote unquote sleep, which should be awake. See, mm -hmm. you should treat the body like a baby, especially when you start working with it first. And then now once you've got it cleaned out, now it's like a baby, it's calm again. Because remember, the, the only state that the body can reach that would be pristine for it as far as on a physical level would be like when it was a child. So you see the riddle? So now if you can get the body back in a childlike state because you've cleaned it up, now you can put the child to sleep. And then it doesn't become a problem to transition from the child into your, into your spirit body. Because the child doesn't say, oh, I'm scared, don't leave me. See, f this is a fear-based, five-based reality. So all the organs until trained edgewise, all the animals still trained edgewise, are in fear. This is why birds run away and cows run away if they can. And all these animals run away because they're in fear, right? So the organs are also in fear of what? Losing the soul. See, if the organ lose the soul, that's called dead. They've already been instructed about that. That means they don't have life anymore according to how everything's been explained to them. And this is why I'm saying you've got to come out of the body and actually see what the body is thinking. So it won't let the spirit leave. <laughs> it's like holding on to the spirit. And then if the spirit again starts to become body identified, then the body will suggest things to the spirit that will actually keep it here. That's known as the beast. You see, the be once, the, once the body turns into the beast, meaning it can't control its nature, <laughs> then it actually starts to suggest things that will keep the person here. Because it's just like a, like a jealousy. Their God is jealous, by the way. <laughs> it's just like a jealousy. It doesn't want to see you go anywhere, never realizing that you, all is self. That I'm not going anywhere. And this is the same thing that I believe the most high, and I can't even use the term God because God is the Gothic God Gud from, uh, <laughs> from the German uh, Futhark runes. But anyway, the most high conceived no separation. You see, there was no, there was, and that's with the whole thing. I had something very eloquent to explain, but I'll just explain it later. But there was no, there was no separation. That's, and what separation is, is like a loss in conductivity. If you can't conduct properly, then you actually forget. Mem is lost or memory is lost. So all of the memories of who we are were lost because we forgot. So to remember, this means that you have to put back on members. Members are other parts of, the, of your spectrum that you have lost. And so this is also goes in the body because if you lose your body, someone says, <laughs> I think some people are getting, get so obese, they're like, man, this is, I give up. <coughs> All is lost. And this is also what is called death. So what happens is, is that we, to project life, we have to actually start doing it from this microcosmic level, which is eating the proper things. Showing that, wait, I'm back on the throne. New sheriff in town. I'm awake. Man, you guys went crazy where I was gone. And the cat, they, didn't, they, they did say when the cats are away, the mice will play. But right. man, look, you guys made a mess of this. Look, raise the jed. This is what they say. This means raise the spine. Who's in charge here? This is what you, when the oversoul returns to the body, this is, which, this is in which it should speak. It also makes it like an adventure. It makes it become something that is cleaning things up. It's a new identity and character that has not been tainted by the reality. And so this is something that we have the ability to do. So I come in all the time and be like, man, I act like I've been gone. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? If it, that's what it takes to clean it up, I come in, well, who's, who's in charge here, man? This is crazy, man. Why? We can't eat this. This is too much time on this. What's going on over here? This needs to be organized. <sighs> when are you guys going to learn how to do this when I'm gone? Sometimes you have to go into your body like that. And so that, you know, it, it becomes like just with a child, like a game that it plays in order to get itself on another level. You see what I mean? And that's why I was saying the soul has already been through all of this. It's not learning anything per se. 
It's existing with the experience of movement. The body and these other systems that we've engaged in, that we've birthed, <laughs> is the ones that we're actually having to, to bring up to the standard of uh, what could really be called living. And so if we're suggested to do something else, meaning if, we're, if it's suggested to us to eat things and to believe in things and to do things that are going to bring personal harm to us, it's still our 100% responsibility because that is something that we did in the level of knowing. And so this becomes a, such a hard uh, uh, thing to take these days because immediately, I'll tell you, when most people heard that, they immediately reflected the people who can do nothing. It's almost like an instinct for us to think about someone else beside ourselves. And then we think that's a noble deed, too. It's like, yeah, I think about other people, so I think about myself. And then, so what's wrong with that, right? So then they want to argue with you. But they're not realizing it's inner stand. How are you going to fix someone else and you ain't fixed yourself? How are you going to teach DNA, which only gobbles everything in your auric field, about doing something correct if you're not correct? <laughs> the only thing it's really absorbing is your fallacy. You see what I mean? Like, on the real level, if you're not real, nobody can really absorb anything from you. And that's just how it is. These are the laws and the rules that can't be broken. And this is why the church is failing. And the, the uh, medical systems are failing. All of these people are failing because they're turned on to false synthetic systems. Synthetic systems can't even keep up with the advanced life forms that are here now. They're talking about they got ADD. <coughs> Let me tell you another thing. Vaccinations. Yeah. Straight robbery. When's the last time we had a plague? <laughs> 30 years ago? So why are you still vaccinating with a low vibratory, uh, uh, high metal base, uh, mercurial base, nanotechnology reversed, uh, uh, nanotechnology embedded virus? Why would you put that into somebody who just came into a dimension beside lowering their frequency? So then look, so I didn't vaccinate a child. You can do it. It's legal. You can go get the papers and they say it's part of your religion and you don't want to vaccinate your child. This baby will not stop. The baby sleeps maybe three, four hours a day at the most and not even at the same time in intervals so then you have another another thing going on an unvaccinated baby with a vaccinated parent oh my goodness <laughs> yeah, yeah. you see and this is where the parent comes out oh, he's got ADD and he can't seem to stay focused on something it's because it's a piece of plastic <laughs> it's like how much can the plastic really do you're asking for a lot it's you <laughs> that needs to get out <laughs> and go jump in the ocean somewhere and conquer some fears. You see, it's like the other thing about this is, is that now we used to be engaged. Like it was really the gauntlet, like to run the course of earth and to be able to deal with the energies was not done on your iMac. <laughs> it was actually something that you went out with others that were, was always at least one that was very versed in doing it. And then the rest of everyone was just learning. But because we were together, it was an adventure and it was our exact, exact existence. You see what I mean? So we tap into that phase again now, realizing that that's a phase that we need. And, and as I see on most of that, they, as they tell you on the astral plane, most of the time when you see people, they're just sleep. And so there is a major part of, you see how hard it is to get up every day and to do something amazing? <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't just come out of nowhere these days, right? It takes a lot to say, I'm going to go and, and do this magnificent, I'm going to go downtown, and I'm going to give this to these people, I'm going to run down here, process this paperwork. It doesn't happen. Why? Not enough energy, right? So the linchpin is not so much with your idealism and your state of mind. That's doing great. It's the body, because it's the pentagram, and that's what, again, master knowledge will tell you once you put it all together, you'll realize that the bodies were the vessels that were created. If they can make you become body identified, and I repeat only because repetition actually teaches many individuals, but the thing is that if the body becomes, a person becomes body identified, they become trapped in the body. This is when you actually put a spirit on the sidelines. You didn't bench the spirit. No longer is it uh, this grand being running across multiple universes. It actually thinks it's a body at a graveyard. And still waiting on whatever this emblem is, is a cross, which is something that resonates to it, to occur. Now remember, when you go into a graveyard, oh, there's all these two-dimensional crosses everywhere. So on the spiritual level, all the spirits that are actually there are just seeing portals and gateways back into other worlds, which is the symbol of Earth. If you look at the astronomical symbol of the Earth, it's actually a cross. So these are the kind of the, the knowledge that... Basically, it's saying to you, you don't have to wait until you die to experience what's going to happen if you're expanded and then you leave the body. You see what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to wait until, oh, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen then. No, you need to get trained now. You don't go into the greatest thing that probably is ever going to happen to you without any prior preparation for it. You'd like to be surprised and go right into the next light again. See, if you want to understand also how 
humans get here is that when two human bodies come together and create the friction on an astral level because the kundalini the, the little bit that's left is beginning to rise between the two beings and then the stargazer meaning the unbirthed soul from the sea actually looks out and because it can see it's not seeing with eyes it's seeing with that the beam that gives it like a far infrared vision and, and into ultraviolet lights it basically can see all the lights when the baby is in the womb it doesn't see darkness just so people understand but when it sees the light that it thinks it's harmonic with this is an attraction now how you know that this takes place is that when you look into the eyes as a man a woman and a woman a man and with your preference you know I won't get into that topic so what happens is, is you know you gotta dance around on top of these days they'll try to blackball you in everything forget it just leave it alone it's not important enough so the reality is it's serious that when you look into the eyes and you get that attraction, the eyes are the gateway of the soul, right? The soul is the one carrying the real soul, the light, because soul means light in Latin. So this means that you see a light that you're attracted to. So this is a redundification of something that already happened before. It's not something new. So when your two parents are together and you look at the light, and then you see that, okay, that's the harmony I want. Then you dive in. And this is how, why these new age people, you chose your life before you got here. And then everyone's like, I didn't choose this shit. <laughs> but the reality is, is that it's, a, it's an entertaining light because your parents were engaging in something that you may have found fascinating to you at that point. And so you see there's a, there's a major connection because it's got to happen somehow. I'm just explaining to you. When, so when you go into the womb, the matrix, the pentagram, etc., then it actually spits out a five-base vehicle. But really what it's doing is it's wrapping you. It's wrapping you in these multiple layers, what we call... Uh, atmospheres is wrapping in you in these multiple layers and then in that multiple, multiple layer wrapping and shielding actually allows you to be in a physical reality without blowing all these people's minds around here about how much light is radiating from your eyes and mouth meaning that all of this wrapping that you see is like a cloak you're like a beggar running around here <laughs> nobody really knows that you're really this magnificent spirit inside because you're encased in this body right so this is why there's this, this, um, this level of disassociation, too. That's why we can't see the powerful part of people, because we're only looking at this body. And to everyone's body is almost like the same. Everyone has two arms, two legs, and a head. We're tired of seeing it. You see what I mean? So the little different variations don't really matter after a while. So what happens, though, is with the spirit, you'll never get tired of seeing it. You never get tired of seeing yourself. And this is why when you talk to people about what's happening in their reality and what's happening in, in their life, this directly applies to you and the language that you're speaking and the Western hemisphere culture that you've been raised under, then they, it, the ear perks up because then, you know, the, uh, you want to hear about yourself. <laughs> so, but still realize all of the opponents in which you face in the, in, on the battlefield, as they call it, the battlefield of Aranja, are nothing but other small fractions of you. And so what happens is, again, if you let them run off and take control because they think they have control or somehow they told you they have control, like the stomach will get in control. And what's other things that get in control? The brain. You see some people with the brain. The brain is in control. Like you can even see the frontal lobe grow somewhat. <laughs> You're looking like the guy, <laughs> looking like a, a fourth dimensional extraterrestrial running around here with the big, big dual brain. Right. And then so you get it. But what happens is, is that it's this harmony. And remember, it took me a minute. Like I laugh at it because it was a real experience. Like I used to think good was only uh, evil 180 degrees. And that went on for a while. <laughs> and then I realized 180 degrees turn would just be an opposite pole. A pole shift is only going to make things just the other spectrum of the same thing that's going on. We need harmony. There's a third component. See, they love to play the dual game. Their god is known as Deuce. That means two, Zeus. Deuce, Pater, father, father two. <laughs> Janus, double face, two face king from Rome. Caesar, the uh, sea serpent. You see what I mean? So we have identified who we're dealing with. But why can't we still see that it's a part of us? You see how it becomes, this is why they called it the scapegoat, the Capricorn, okay? The fish that came from the sea with the goat horns. He's the scapegoat because everyone can blame it on that to why everything is happening wrong. You see what I mean? It becomes this not taking 100% responsibility. It's a grand design in itself, meaning that true evil is erected as a grand design to make a person never realize any parts of themselves because they're afraid of it, then fear is a contraction, not an expansion. If someone scares you, rah, you go back, right? Instinctually. So the third eye and all the other components in fear squeeze together. 
You see what I mean? So your organs and all these other celestial, uh, 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 well, they're celestial bodies, but physical organs in your body are all in a tight ball. Many of them with calcium around them because of the fear. So what, what moves fear out of the way, though, is understanding. Because I'm not telling you that, oh, yeah, you got to go and be friend with Mr. Demon. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like some people take it that far. See, I knew it. I knew that my witchcraft wasn't bad. They're not getting it yet. They just want to find a reason to keep doing witchcraft. You see what I mean? Old programs. You got people living stuck in a consciousness from 2,000 years ago. Man, we've been seeing that some of that stuff didn't work. <laughs> and some of it was caused by phenomena that we were creating with our own mind. That's called the two-slot experiment. <laughs> if you can build up enough mental force human on a three-dimensional reality, you can make something poof into this joker. But you're going to need the energy. And see, this is where the plants came in, though, because the plants, of course, bio biological psychotropics, increase the human energy like to exponential levels, meaning some substances are like stimulants, so the person's projections can literally speed into the reality almost instantly. Okay, so that sounds all fine and dandy until it becomes like the same thing that happened in the beginning with the tree. You start bringing in these creations that you don't even understand how to really take care of. Then you got a world full of these kids that are not getting taken care of that are emitting the frequency that's still holding everyone back. So this is also where the responsibility comes in. And this is the big thing because responsibility is a big part of your ground. Everyone wants to fly off. They're trying to leave. I'm trying to stay. Like I need ground. Like I need to plant more seeds. This got to be rectified. I got a daughter here. So what happened, two daughters here. So what happens is, is that really in our world now, we have to see that it's just <laughs> your God, whatever you want to call it, most high, whatever, has been asleep. It's you. Now there's other ones whispering. They practice under Saud, Sod, the system of the priesthood, which is serpentine. The serpentine priesthood, the serpent brothers, have vowed to be uh, uh, against mankind because mankind is pro-life against earth because earth is pro-life the earth is abundant they have only learned death according to how far they are on the timeline <laughs> they're actually attempting to learn what life and compassion and love is through us and not doing very well because that is not something that you can learn it's something that has you have to be instructed you see if they can't they can't learn from us doing what they do <clears throat> you see what i mean you to to be able to heal someone you have to be able to heal if someone is sick, you have to be able to cure them. So what we're actually looking for from the reality is that time to produce things that it's already shown that it cannot. So that's when we step in and say, but I, I, I can do this. I still can feel the compassion. I still can feel the energy. When I lay on the bed, I put the crystal on. I feel the crystal. And it keeps accelerating. I have more, I'm tapping into more and more of my own senses. I'm knocking down these fear barriers, but there's still some to go. Like I have to be able to hit in, jump in a canoe paddle myself out off this beach over here, get far enough out there and just jump off the boat with a couple things and really dive down there and check it out. Because that on a physical level, rather than sitting back, you know, in a club somewhere, <laughs> you know, on a physical level is going to do a lot more for the spirit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then that, that's really how it really works. It's like we're, we expect something to come out of the dynamic, but you got to understand how to create the conditions. And this is why I've been reading this, uh, these documents about transhumanism and about how they were saying anyway that most of the devices and the stimulus and things that they have don't work on individuals that are not in a controlled environment. This is what they're saying, that any individual that is to use any type of mind-enhancing substance, so you can also pair this in, since those are synthetics, you can pair this in somewhat with real spiritual power, need to actually be in some type of regimen. Meaning that to accelerate who they are, they need to be put in the right type of atmosphere. You have to bring the knowledge and information. You have to bring the diet. There's a maintenance to it, is what I'm saying. So when we're looking for higher levels of expansion, we have to also realize that there's a maintenance. And I think that that's why we didn't really deal with denser vehicles for a long time. And this is also a lot of the knowledge about the fourth dimensional vehicles. But the reality is, is that when you get into vehicles that are less ethereal and you make that your primary state of consciousness, i.e. the body, it becomes very difficult to move around on your timeline until you actually are able to re-identify who you really are. Because, of course, we had ancestors that was running and parading around this thing most of the time. Now we're living in a time where most of there's the only a vibration that they've been destroyed. You see what I mean? So, you know, that's, that's where it's got to come back in. It's got to come back alive inside of us.
Fantastic. I think um, we've got Brother Kenrick who just joined us. I think, I think he had a question for you, actually, um, Seven. Okay, let's do it. Peace, Brother Seven. Wholeness, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Okay, I was listening to what you were saying about the afterlife, and I was reminded of the story of a pilot who crashed his plane and he witnessed his passengers and saw their souls or lights going up. Some were dark, some were, some were very bright. And he decided from then on to live his life in a way that would ensure that when his soul left his body, that it would be bright. Uh, but I was thinking, I thought that the keys to activation, three of the keys were nutrition, meditation, and prayer. And my question to you is, uh, the impact that, medit- ask you what the impact was uh, from meditation and prayer on the body, on your individual reality, and in the world around us? Good question. I, I mean, I, I wanted to first address prayer because, of course, the etymology of the, the term means that um, you are going to be hunted. So what happens is, is that there's, this, there's somewhat of a false identification of what we should be doing when we're entreating because we send it external. Of course, we see God as a being in the sky or a being that's separate from us, and really it's an internal thing. So there is this level of, um, I guess it would be like self-worship. But in the real sense, it's not just saying, look in the mirror, like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm the, you know, I'm the shit. <laughs> That's not self-worship. That's actually self-debasement. What happens is, is that you, you have to be able to carry out the actions because the prayers are only the words. These comes later. And that's why in the ancient text, you'll find that they never even wanted you to pray out loud or entreat out loud or ask for anything out loud. Because if something like these other entities would hear you, they would attempt to grant it for you. And then try to guide you down a path that would lead you to it, but also lead you into alliance with them. So what we really find is, is that the, the, in, the entreating in itself comes from the actual action. And this is why the, the ritual is so powerful is because the ritual is the actual physical activity of the symbol that of the symbolic uh, uh, situation that is taking place. Right. So what we have is, is that we have all this work that we should really be doing with the body and with the mind and with the soul. And the impact of when you discover, just right off the bat, from the mind, body, and soul, which one that is the most deficient. You bring that one back online, what you experience after that is you'll experience basically a... um, you know, multiple levels of the awakening. The first thing that generally happens is that, that you see how the, the actual environment that is around you is actually tailored to cause your expansion. This is the awakening. Because if you've actually reached the level of expansion, you'll see that the rest of what you need is starting to fall out in front of you after you take the step. So this is, the, um, this is one of the secrets to this is that it's when you get into the creation zone, which is... Many people are at the creation zone but won't take the step. It's almost like if some people, when they know that they succeeded, really can't accept their success. But what happens is, is that if you're in a body, you've already succeeded. See, all of what I explained, even about the spirit being put back into the body and all that stuff, if a person didn't catch it, you were already this expanded being. And you are always going to be that. <laughs> So nothing can hold you except for you. And this is where the whole trickery with the reality is because, like I said, again, it makes you body identified. It makes you believe you have to do this, 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 this in order to, uh, to get to this level of knowledge, etc. But And that's, again, just information. But where it really stems into, again, is to make sure that you're applying the right methods to what you're trying to get to. There's a lot in the reading, like I've exhausted pretty much every book that I feel is of the greatest importance on the spiritual path. And so what happens is, is that you still realize that there's the reading, the spiritual path, and then there's the actual spiritual walk. (laughs) And of course, especially if you've been on the spiritual walk before you took a moment to start reading about it. (laughs) You see what I mean? Like, and that's also the interesting thing is because many of us have a, have another way of seeing this. And that's why I I wouldn't encourage people to just take my words as the only the words in stone and everything. Every person has their own insight to this and are seeing from certain levels. Like basically with the body full of eyes, if you're seeing from your midsection, you only see a certain level of the projection. (laughs) Why, if you're seeing from the highest state of the mind, then you're seeing a certain way. 
What I'm trying to do personally myself, and, and I don't even want to say try, but what I'm doing is seeing from all levels. I'm oscillating through these levels so that I can catch something when it's not supposed to be there. And that, like in my case, with this conversation right now, it's the prayer. A person spending their time in treating for something, and then that's actually time spent and wasted with them asking for something that they will definitely have to achieve on their own if it's a real desire, it's a, if it's a real request. We even use that word because desire, of course, has other connotations to it. So the benefits that you receive, though, is first synchronicity. And you can already see your synchronicity now, though. Remember, this is not something that just switches on like overnight. It's something that's already been going on and it just gets more aggressive. So what happens is, is that the synchronicity is where you are what you see around you. Now, you don't get crazy over it. This is what the doctors always tell me. You don't want to get crazy about this. Meaning if you start looking at every single number, you start looking at every single situation, every person's name and everything, now it's become the same as even the worst pagan tradition. You see what I mean? Because you're actually allowing all those integers to become the integers that determine where you're going to go next. So easily the integers will start moving around. Meaning that how all the synchronicities and things that are happening, it's almost like there's something I explain. And this is, of course, there's levels of teaching of these methods, but you're getting a lot tonight just enough putting it in one program. There's a way where any time you accelerate through a level, you don't accelerate into it strong. Meaning that when you're making your changes, you acknowledge your change, but you don't be like, oh, yeah, I change. Look, I'm bigger now, I'm more powerful. Of course not, right? So what this is about is this is about the same way that you can see the hidden world is by not doing the reflections that come with when you see something. And sometimes if you've ever seen something out of the corner of your eye, right? And then you're like, you turn real quick, like, what's that? And then you don't see nothing, right? And this is because it is something there, but you just sent off a signal that says, I can see you. So it reads signals. It doesn't read, it doesn't, it can't see like we see. That's what people need to understand. So when you send out the signal that says with anything, and so bring this to a head, with anything, when you send out a signal that is too aggressive, you jar it. And so thus you never really get the the true benefit of whatever it is that you actually seek and you can seldom times make it continue or allow it to continue and so this is the same thing in meditation when you'll notice that you're right at the point of liftoff and you're like I'm at the point of liftoff <laughs> and then liftoff is over it's over now now you gotta wait another 20-30 minutes through breathing before you get actually to that point again so this is actually when we identify where this was coming from it was coming from the body the body is scared it thinks at a certain point that you're going to die, it's going to die because <laughs> you're going to leave it. So do you see how if you really understand how to take care of yourself, you will hold yourself and you will say, man, I know that you've been you've been suffering. See, it's an introspection. So you actually see them. You've been treat, mistreating this basically <laughs> entity that doesn't even know any better for you not to say that the body is alive is not for you to say that the body is not alive would be just as silly as saying any animal is not alive, right? We can acknowledge that. But for you to say that you are the body means that you actually haven't identified your soul. So do you see how each of these levels have a certain separation point? And there's a bridge though, but there's a certain separation point. So this separation point created a fear, which actually at some point in our, in our, in our progress, which they call the schism, created multiple walls. This is what you see in the fire, the, the shell, you see there's these other intersecting crescents that divide the different parts of the shell or the layers. So these walls of illusion that are created, obviously, from what I'm telling you, in multiple ways, are what are keeping us from perceiving things the way they really are and also being able to harness the level of energy that is necessary to actually experience it. Because seeing is always believing. So what I mean by that is that it's going to be very difficult to read through a thousand pages of, you know, who knows, the Merovingian mythos and then actually experience it. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's like you, can, you wouldn't be able to access completely what it is to understand what it is unless you somehow experienced it. So this is why the only perspective of this universe that is important is your perspective, because it's the only one that you're going to understand. So what happens here, though, is that there's some basic principles about how this thing works. In, in Arabia, 
if they saw you like you were now, basically meaning if you were walking around the desert, they would ask you, do you need help tying your camel down? <laughs> that was the code. Meaning that did you let your vehicle that you were riding on get away from you? And then they would show you methods because what happened was is back in the days, it was really like they called the brotherhood and it's been usurped and the sisterhoods. Everyone was looking out for each other. They weren't trying to practice spells and magic and trap each other and uh, all, doing all sorts of things. And you see what I mean? That obviously wasn't going to be pro-human. It doesn't even make any sense. So we have to see ourselves still before that began to occur. And what makes people start doing that? But also still, you'll be able to identify, because if it wasn't in you, you would have seen within someone around you of how easy it is to start to agree with the idealism of the lower vibratory frequency. See, because that's still all we're talking about is frequencies. However it divides up in the human dra drama, that's the storyline. But the frequency is the same. So whether it is you got mad at the mall the other day, or you just took down an entire number three, with extra cheese, it's still the same thing on the frequency realm. And that's why in, the, in, in many of the, the levels of knowledge that can be achieved, you steal yourself. Notice the term, steal. This means you actually have to get yourself back from something. <laughs> what could have you? But by this conversation, you're seeing that something can steal your attention. So what happens when you steal yourself, this means you make everyone quiet. Like all your beliefs, all who you want to entreat, all what you think is going on, all of this has gotten us nowhere. What is it of this that we can take with us? What kind of real knowledge have you learned? This is the instruction to the body. And you'll come trying to bring some stuff, and none of this stuff will be even valid. And you know why? Because if it hasn't gone anywhere, it can't bring anything valid. So this is, again, the addressing that comes to the body when the body is now approached with new, a new horizon. Now this is what we're going to do. Now this is a mind, body, soul thing because there's not just one of us here. This is like when you tell the child, look, you're not the only one in the world. <laughs> yeah. So this is, notice how most of all of what's going on, whether it's a spirit or whether it's a child or whatever, or, or human or whatever, it is just like the same phase that we actually see that children go through and that we've gone through. So what is tell, that's telling you is the manual to the entire thing, man, you'll, that's man, L, man, God, so the manual to the entire thing is built in man. It's not, it wasn't far. It's because remember how they tell you that we're all one? But somehow people are thinking way out there in Beetlejuice. <laughs> way out there in, 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 oh, it's the Pleiades. Man, it's, that's in the sea. All you're seeing is the reflection of the celestial bioluminescent bodies on the, uh, on the external manifold, which is basically a mirror. <laughs> the thing is, is that when you shatter a person's illusion, you better be ready to actually bring them wholeness because they're going to need to be able to create their own. And that's why the universe sent us on this adventure as creators, because that was our key thing. We could always replicate. <laughs> we weren't, in a sense, like I said, because the creator is a, is a universal term. <laughs> you know, what you have is replicators, evolvers. They can't say they actually create anything because you can't take credit for it. You see what I mean? Like, how is someone going to take credit for something that no, everyone's not present to actually say, okay, you did it. Now you see the error of God. God said, I'm the only God. There's no God but me. <laughs> Shame on you. There's no onlys, first of all, and there's no ones, first of all. And where we're from, there's no numbers. You see, there's another level to before the Babylonian, Babylonish stuff started coming into play, which was language. 72 languages. We operate in numbers like 4, 8, 64, 32, 144, 256. These are all numbers a computer spit back. So remember, when you start blowing out of their template, which is the geometric structure of the matrix that they're running, they can't map your integers. So it basically sends their system haywire. The reason why it's called Vatican is because it's vacant, meaning that that's the seat of God, no one is there. But the real seat of God is in your head. That's why it's a pun. God is dead. God is dead inside of you. God is hung. It takes three days to cross over what we call three days to cross over the rift between this dimension and the next. That's called the death, the burial, and resurrection. You see, so there's, this, there's these deep metaphors within our life that were our real knowledge. And then it was usurped. Sir, serpent, 
taken from us, snaked. You see what I mean? And then what did that is our primordial way of being, our old news, old laundry, old ideas, things that got to go. So it wasn't necessarily the external reality because everything adheres to, adheres to the spiritual reality first. Look, we created the spiritual world way before we created the physical world. Physical world is smeared down light, compressed light. Light is generated first from somewhere, full spectrum, then comes into a prism and then begins to create physical objects because it's vibrating at a lower density. So one comes before the other. So that's why I say that is where to which we return. But it's inside. We're not going anywhere. That's what people think. Like, I'm, I'm sure there's new planets. <laughs> Look, they even, got, they even got some city layouts and stuff. I always show, I joke with this stuff, but they show you the city layout. You know, it's all laid out in the perfect murk of a mysticism. And <laughs> you know, they got the, the rules and the laws and the codes and the connors and the creed. And everyone's all separated into their positions. And they still haven't got it yet. Like, what happens is, is that what is happening in humanity now, any real dense, non-free-flowing person was not, is not going to be able to imagine it for a while. <laughs> like, you actually have to wake them up before they can see it for what it really is. And there's a big level of confirmation that because the words have already gone out, remember, we've been talking about this stuff for a minute, like even in the beginning, we were already dropping enough to get people awake. There's millions of impressions. And what happens is that each person is hearing the knowledge, but they're also hearing what they need to hear. Some part of this, I don't understand that. It doesn't make any sense. But then they catch something. Oh, yeah, that's it. And then it puts these pieces together, right? That's actually their DNA. Because remember, we were saying junk DNA, DNA is information. Junk information is basically false knowledge. And false knowledge is definitely being pushed into reality. So someone who gives you the truth, it actually cracks your DNA. Hmm. Because the spiral of the mind can work. When the mind is able to begin to flow into answering all the questions, it starts to spiral. Then the center of your brain, which is the corpus callosum, starts to light up rather than short circuit. See, short circuitry takes place between the left and the right brain when they go into conflict with each other. When you're trying to decide <laughs> one that you think is clearly right and the other one you think is clearly wrong. This short circuits. It's like after the brain basically just goes... And then that area actually becomes even dark. And then that actually is the bridge. Because then there's no bridge to basically ferry the neurons between one brain and the other so that they can communicate. So this manifests, of course, for the man as if he has no, no feminine component. He does not have any compassion for nature and earth. While at woman, there's a manifestation of, this, of somewhat of the same thing, but on, the, you know, on that opposite spectrum. So where we're at here is that we're able to identify it. I'm still looking for the, the, the panacea myself, something that makes a cripple climb trees. Something that a person can access and have no knowledge at all and immediately become enlightened into the full realization of who they are. Something that breaks off all shells. But until we reach that, we actually have individuals that are get, getting either closer to it or making that breakthrough themselves. And they are actually being able to explain things to other individuals that may not be able to grasp the entire message of something that we're presenting today and wouldn't even have time and attention to do such things. But giving them what would be then tidbits of it to actually expand them to another level of where they are. Now remember, it's all a ladder. So if someone was mad because they're still practicing, I tell you now, you can stop practicing. <laughs> the real thing's happening. But what I mean by practicing is that if you're in a belief system, it's a step on the ladder. If you notice, there's something universal about belief systems, the four angels. There's always the same angels. Brahm is always present, Abraham. He's always present, the Brahmin, with his wife, Saraswati, or Sarah. They're always present. This is known as the template. They say it came from Orion. That Yal de Baal, who's the character you're calling Jehovah, erected a pyramid here. Actually, excuse me. Before the other pyramids were erected, the original pyramid is a, was a prison. It was a prism. It was basically put in the bottom of the sea because of something the entity was doing when it was in Orion. And this is the story that you get from their faction, which really has not much to do with us in the beginning, but now to do with us now because of their interbreeding and their suggestion to the ideas of the way the earth should go. But this entity was ejected from Orion. And this was the great battle in heaven where the serpent was cast out, serpent, into the bottom of the sea. And then the book says, woe to you, earth, he cometh down to you. Like basically saying, watch out, this guy is not a good character. That's why we don't want him here anymore. It's gone. 
So obviously, again, Orion wasn't in full realization of all itself either. So you've got to understand, each of these celestial bodies, they're only in the perception of the light that they can see. Now you've actually seen the entire gambit. So you can expand even beyond any riddle or mythology that you'll ever choose to assimilate. So what happens, though, is, is that that pentagram in the bottom of the sea became known as the Merovingian mythos of the, the, the entity known as Saturn or Cedar, who it later on became metamorphosized into Sat in the Western world as Satan, but also as Santa Claus. So what happens here is, is that that prism, which you see, they say we find in these pyramids in the ocean. Now, it wasn't just one. There was actually a third of them. That's what I said. A third of them decided to go and fall out of heaven and go down to earth. Because the earth was like a womb, and they wanted to go into the womb. But because of their level of life, this is the secret to the time machine, you can't just splash down in any environment expecting to live. Like, you can't just come into some atmosphere and expect it to be habitable to the air that you breathe from your own planet. We figured that out already. So the, the place in which they live is in the ocean. This is the, it, this is the area that is off limits, per se, to man, except for those who are under maritime, Mary law, the Merovingians, to run the sea. So the reason why you cannot go into the ocean is because it's salt water. You cannot drink salt water. But isn't there an entire level of complex bioorganisms bio, uh, uh, that need salt water, right? So this is the separation between the kingdoms. Now, if you look into deep mythology, they say that the covenant was by salt, meaning that when the seed spread and rose from the, from the sea, this is Darwin's symbol, fish walking on land, that it came upon land, then you begin the Catholic story. Oana's Dagon Cthulhu comes on land teaching mankind knowledge from the stars. <laughs> right? And this is the, then you pick back up in the Bible, Fallen An or Book of Enoch, fallen angels taught man and woman all the mysteries of heaven. But man and woman did not know they were actually what would have been abhorred in heaven and thrown out of heaven. And then it also talks about that there was a bond between these entities known as, Har it was done on the Mount Harmon, Harmony. Now this is the key to the Archon mystery because the Archons are actually the animalistic nature, like and the strongest of them being the lion snake, y'all the Baal. So this is basically zoomorphication of the energies that are, you know, they got heat. Like if you understand and you see what a lion is, a lion is about heat. Now there was a way that heat can either become like a blast furnace <laughs> or it can become an incubator. So this is why they also tell you the riddle is within the Sphinx, because the Sphinx is a lion-faced man, but that's a woman. That's the other thing that they <laughs> didn't tell everyone. Fee is female, she's feline fertility. It's all in the etymology. It's actually a tone on the rhythmic scale. When you zap that tone in the water, it begins the first stage of life. So this is what you can gain from collecting all the information and the knowledge on the internet and all the rest of the portals of access from humanity and, able to, and then you're actually able to understand it is that you'll at least be able to, to see how it works. But this is where we are as far as humanity is concerned is actually applying it. Because we've been taught something that is very strange and it's how to monitor something. It's like watching TV. How to monitor something, how to listen to something, but not apply it. To not think that it, this is not about you, though. You're not in the matrix. Remember, you got out. <laughs> you see, so there's this big part I used to do on myself. I thought, man, you know, I'm still trying to figure out how far you really gotten. Are we actually going in a circle or are we in a coil? Like, are, are you seeing something wrong? Look, we're not getting far enough with this. Is there another way? Can we fast forward this and rewind this? Are you sure? So you have to always do that with yourself. It's an exercise. And then once you start getting exercise, I guess exorcism takes place. You start leaving these lower vibratory frequencies that don't want to move. Meaning that, look how many states of consciousness are still resident within the body, but are also manifesting themselves in the physical atmosphere that don't really want to do anything. They just want to lay around like lizards under the sun. When meanwhile, yeah. we're sitting in, we could be on the great air above. Whatever they're talking about that could be achieved, we could have already been done and then back to, uh, to uh, what? Uh, Nepton 5 before the evening was over with, but still riding the sun, so there was no evening <laughs> that day. You see what I mean? Like, there's a whole other thing, and they can never trick me, though. This is the other thing that you got to know. This is why the experience is so necessary. They can never trick me to believe that it doesn't exist. See, there's a Jedi mind trick for real in Dimension. Remember, the Jed is the Egyptian priesthood. They're now in Israel. 
So you know that, but they, it's, it's still Saud, so it's the, also in Saudi Arabia, and they control all the oil just like the Jesuits do. But the Jedi mind trick, they'll hit you with every single time and disempower you and be like, but listen, you can't do this, though. It's not possible. You didn't, you know, there's no other life forms. <laughs> you see, it's idiocracy. And so when we tune into that vibration of closing our minds like that, see how it, how it works. God's dead. <laughs> we go to him after we die. What? <laughs> yeah. But he's our father, so my father's dead. Yes, your father is dead. You see? Look how it plays with a lot of the, the, um, the tribes on this earth where their grandfathers and their warriors have been cut off. They were shipped off to other lands and their king slaughtered and slayed. You see what I mean? So there was a conflict here. Don't get it twisted. That's why I say they won't get me to forget. But I'm not going to be burning with rage either. Somebody, oh, let's go fight. All right. You're going to, okay. They got Mars with them, so be, be aware of that. <laughs> if you're going to try to go fight with physical stuff, <laughs> you know, tu yeah, Tubal Cain, he was the one that shaped and fashioned the first sword. So I'm sure he's up on his game now. Mm. So the reality is, is that you ain't going to sit there and wage weapons of war with these these beings and actually get on the same vibratory frequency as them. But notice that is the, that's called the pinnacle and the height of, uh, of the, the martyr. But Mar, ah, it's Mars. <laughs> ah, he's the one that spilled the blood. <coughs> you see what I mean? So there is this connection since they've gotten us so close to it. And that's, that's what the thing is, is that they had to bring, they had to park their celestial bodies close. Meaning that what's happening is, is that all of what's going on around us, and now I'm taking you to the they, just so everyone likes to live through they for a while, by the way. And they're like, yes, that's them, that's them, that's them. Okay, let me tell you, here's the oh, oh, drum roll. It's inside of you. That what actually is going on is that these organs are out of control. <laughs> and they are vibrating all sorts of harmonics that are inverted and distorted, obtuse angles, test, uh, 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 trapezoids which is, is the design and pattern. When you are shaped and molded into the idealism of this society, you become linear. So your geometry comes like these little petty stars they keep drawing around here. Where realistically, the human being is superfluous. Even the human body is, doesn't have one straight line. So what about us tells us that anything with a straight line is going to be some level of all-powerful mastery? <laughs> Earth doesn't, nature doesn't create in straight lines. So, you know, this is a, also when you understand the shapeshifter is to actually be able to change into another frequency that makes you nonlinear. See, the only change that occurs is when you cease to become like you are. But you've actually gone somewhere, though, even though you can't physically see it. So that's called shapeshifting or teleportation. So this gives you the keys because... In this reality, of course, there's a great deal of molding and crafting going on. They are actually roughing man and woman down like ashlar stones, trying to polish them into designs in which they want weird shapes. So what happens is, is that what you get a chance to do is to get into the control seat and shut the gates of all of the extra tubes and things. That's how it looks on the astral plane. You see these tubes that are connected to people. And these tubes are things that they're connected to. They're like, and I said they're like anchors. So when you're mad at someone in the past and all that, every time you cycle through that particular part of your system, that comes up and you go into that frequency again. And of course, I talked about how to remove a lot of those anchors is this understanding if you move any part of your foundation, you will fall lower than where you are. Meaning that all of what has happened to you in the past if you're comfortable with where you are now, especially with receiving this kind of information, then you wouldn't want to move none of that. It also it gives you like a receipt to write off the past. <laughs> All right, you guys, just go. All right, don't say nothing to me, though. <laughs> but serious, it's like, I'm not gonna, I can't let you be back anymore. Now I've identified you as an anchor. And now, listen, this is not something that's new. In the ancient books, they show you that there's these cores or tubes or tentacles that connect to you from other entities that are attempting to control your consciousness if you've latched onto them some way or another because they've sent out a, a hook to uh, actually reel you in. So what happens is, is that there is this meditation that begins with cutting cords. <laughs> And, but there's also, some people just talk about that meditation, the cutting cord, but there's also before that a realization of what cord not to cut. 
See, they always, this, is, this was something that took years to learn at times when you had to go through the spiritual process because someone had to take you step by step. They had to tell you, yeah, you, you cut cords, but there are certain cords you don't cut. Never cut your umbilical cord. You see what I mean? Never cut your connection to your mother. Like regardless of what all these folks are telling you, this thing was bearing fruits and vegetables that your mother and great-grandmother were eating. So it's never been an adversary to you. It's under attack too. <laughs> so there's a lot of anger that's being spilt out at times into the matrix, and then the matrix gets idealized as being earth. You see what I mean? Because there's a communication problem with the words. But again, with earth, we're seeing as a living organic being. What the Matrix movie, because even the word Matrix still means a, a place where things are cultivated, it's actually a Greek word that comes from matrices. The Matrix movie made it seem like it was a synthetic world. So that way there would be no care for the synthetic world. But what if it was a real world? Meaning that how we're treating this world today is almost as if we're not even acknowledging that it, it's feeling too. And this is why the communication is broken between, with many individuals between this earth and them. That's why they don't get the sense. They, I think on TV they call it the spider sense. <laughs> you get the sense that something's going to happen. That's not, you know, that's not the right move to make. Because that is encased in the earth. When you unlock those chakras, you always have it. I mean, it's no problem for you to have the sense even two or three days before something that you don't do. And then when it, when it actually comes to you, it looks like deja vu. <laughs> Like, it's another deja vu. I remember this happened. Uh, yeah, no, that's exactly <laughs> no. At this point, I was already here. You see what I mean? Because this is slow. Remember, because it's all about density and vibration, and we're still sitting in these dense bodies where computers can even hang around. What we're still saying is, is that this one's moving kind of slow. So once you jump into another vehicle that's moving faster, you actually see this this uh, linear timeline. You travel to another part of it. It's like, a, remember, all these vehicles, they cease to become linear the faster they become. And it's a vibratory frequency. And let, I'm going to explain it very simple. I got one for you. This is going to be as simple as you can get it. Okay. A fan. When you have a fan on really low, you can see the blade. But when you turn the fan on real high, you can't see the blade no more. But it doesn't mean the blade is not there. If you don't think the blade is there, put your hand in the fan. Right. So what this is telling you is, is that on the higher vibratory frequency of the body, that when the body goes in the higher vibratory frequency, it actually becomes what most people would think is invisible. But it doesn't mean that it's not there. So on a higher level, what you're really looking at with all of this is what, I, what I'm trying to explain to you here is, is that when you can bring the hot body into a higher vibratory frequency, it oscillates so fast that it actually sees the other entities and other energies that are on the spectrum. Because it can actually see those energies if it's going up, this has become the difference between centripetal and centrifugal, if it's going up, then it actually can see things before they're even about to happen. It's just a vibratory frequency change. This is, again, another reward for being able to actually accomplish cleansing the body and the organs and flushing out all the toxins. Because then you, the body plays the high frequency on its own. It doesn't need some tuning forks and all sorts of stuff. That's for fine tuning. The body is doing what it does right now. It just can't do its best. And so that's why you, you get it cleaned up. It starts vibrating at this higher frequency. Then you're perceptive of things. Now, some people say, well, does that mean I disappear? It just all depends. Because when you get to the actual di disappear point, you better know how to reappear now. <laughs> No, but serious, where the disappear point is, which doesn't really occur, because what happens is, is just like if you were in the astral body and you flew up to the sun, it's not hot. So what happens when the body enters into a high vibratory frequency because of the way the vehicle is configured, then the body basically goes on like a standby and then you come out of the body. Now, what would happen if the body did not go on standby is what's called a shroud. It's when a person goes into a higher frequency and all you see is basically like a smear of their shadow there and they're gone. And so that's what I'm saying. Hopefully you can rematerialize because what actually happens though is, is that just like with that fan, now let's say for instance, we see we turn it on low, you can still see the blaze. I turn it on high, you, can, you can't see the blaze, but the blaze is still there. But what if I turn it on like super high? Let's say for instance, there's no limit to how fast I can turn it. What's eventually going to happen? The fan's going to catch on fire. So do you see how what Kundalini is also about? 
Yeah, spontaneous combustion. Exactly. So what happens is, is that, as I say, you got to know how to rematerialize. Also, the chakras have to be open in order for the energy to cycle. If it's closed, it actually comes up to that chakra and it, it stops there. And if you're on the path, then there's a lesson for you to learn. If you've basically, like I said, entreated into the holiest of holies of a chakra, then there's going to be some kind of impediment that's going to come after that. And so, and that's, uh, and that's been seen and, and known and documented. So, but yeah, I mean, you're dealing, but you can see, of course, just from the, this, uh, the, just the tidbit that I gave today of this, how magnificent just this world is. It's not just about the body. It's not just about drinking these green shakes. <laughs> None of that sounds appealing to me, by the way, this whole sit down and meditate, not do nothing, drink green shakes and have a big smile on the face. I mean, even if I was able to accomplish that for about 10 minutes, I would immediately go to thinking about someone else. That's just how I'm built. Like I, for some reason, think about other people and then I can't enjoy where I'm at. I'd be like, man, until these people are able to do it, then I need to be on doing something else because I feel like that the, the, uh, the, it's the duty of the strong to uphold whatever you would think is weak. But in reality, it's just parents and children. <laughs> like, because obviously the baby is not going to jump out of the crib, go make its own bottle and do all sorts of things. But it doesn't mean that you don't care for the baby. And then you actually understand the phase that it's going through. So I think that this is also the same way we got to look at a lot of this stuff going on if we're planning on keeping our frequency. That's another thing. Oh, boy, does misery love company. When something comes around with a lower frequency, whether it's Illuminati or, from, or your aunt next door, it's the same thing. <laughs> like, people don't get it. It's like, actually, the aunt can do worst because she can be under your armor. Why, see, like Illuminati, you can already identify them with the Rothschild, Red Shield, Martian, Romulus, and Remus, etc., and then start writing them off and everything they do is from being able to affect you because you don't want the anchor. Yeah. But Auntie Gladys... It's like a whole other thing. It's just because she's your mother's sister and it's, you see what I mean? And then that time. So what happens is, is that we face an entirely different component <laughs> and, and or excuse me, an entirely different opponent. And, um, and so this, that introspection helps out a lot too. It helps you out to look at, okay, look, you know, all this stuff, apples and pears, <laughs> pots and pans. I mean, come on. Is it singularity or not? <laughs> Like, am I going to power this thing up fully so I can get to the next level? Or am I going to stay around and play with this thing? I mean, 365 days a year, same holidays. Hmm. Yeah. It's still, what is it today? Sunday. Oh, my goodness. This is so boring. You got, one, you got one sun, one moon, and five planets that you're honoring. Because, that, you know, that's the seven days of the week, of course. And then so here we are. We got our cons on the dimension, meaning that you have hypersentient beings that are inorganic, actually utilizing knowledge that was abhorred from heaven, put us on that system. We're utilizing that system to try to get by. It's not producing many results. <laughs> you can see that all around you. The way that they're running society oils a part of that system. It doesn't work. Or oil, of course, is Leo. Leo is the lion. So what happens is, is that, again, if you also go into the deep history, you'll find that there was a time where, again, the whole thing was symbiotic. I just, I gotta ask, just go ahead and go answer questions right now, man. But you can see, like, I've, I got this big grin over here because I feel like so much was translated during this conversation, man. It's like there's certain individuals that heard what they needed to hear. And it's not, not saying that I'm, I'm ready to finish, but, or I could, but the reality is, man, it's just, you can see it somewhat when it's time for, huma for humanity's emancipation. Yeah. When you're on my level of this, and it's not necessarily a higher level, it's just I have 14,000 eyes, I mean, there's 7,000 people in the network, so, and I'm, I care about it. So yeah. that's what allows me to be able to tap into what is there. Like when you don't care about something, then nothing is important. I know every single individual, I answer every single email, even though I'm backed up about 50 emails right now or 60 emails because of the cleanse, but I answer every single email. I've been doing that for three years, no matter how big it's gotten. I face many challenges, most of them with myself. Yeah. and suggestion and that's what I want to let people know remember it's not just you here there's an ancient text shaitan regime protect me from the whispers of shaitan shaitan is only lower vibratory frequencies trapped in the spectrum a Merkaba that's why they want to teach Merkaba mysticism it's just still another vehicle to be trapped in I want out I'm not trying to learn about your pentagram your dodecahedrons your, your casahedrons these look silly to me it looks as silly as golf Turn put this little bitty ball in this round hole and there's a whole womb here. Are you crazy? Like, and this is also what they talked about where there's another deeper level and layer to this riddle about how man and woman became stumbling blocks for each other. Because what happened is, is that we were so in love with this. 
We had so much compassion for what we brought forth and raised here, not just our children. Every time we took a seed and planted it, not just ideas, because remember, ideas are seeds, but the real seeds for plants. There wasn't all these trees and things hanging around like they are now. All of this had to be built piece by piece. So that was that was the joy in it. It was like, but it was the building where they're singing going on, not like at Hewitt Packard. <laughs> you know, they're, they're building something, but everyone is in the queue. They're in the queue. They didn't use the person like a womb, sucking the energy out the person. The person doesn't get anything. You see, so they just duplicate what's going on. They're replicators. They know the cube is a cubicle. <laughs> so they put you in a cubicle. So, you know, there's, there's a lot to this that, um, that you can keep seeing, like I said, redundified through the reality, but is there any questions, any pertinent things that somebody needs to know? I mean, I know there's, like, you, I know when you get home, there's got to be like, oh my goodness, I should have just, that would have been the one that just really blew him. He wouldn't even have known what to say. <laughs> well, Ros Roslyn has joined us. She's late. She had a family function this evening. But awesome. She's now joined us. Yeah. Hello, Sabin. Wholeness, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Excellent. Like we're we're having a, a excellent time over here. I'm on uh, day seven of the cleanse, and I've been able to transmit somewhat through this conversation some very key points. So we're doing excellent. Hold on, real quick. I just reset our recording because I know we like to have that clear recording. Um, oh. Okay, but yeah, I did it. So um, the okay. So what this cleanse does is that remember, there's all types of fast, and there's all types of cleanse. So there's a lot of people say, well, you can do this for a lot cheaper. You can do this a different way. You're right. You're right. You're right. But the reality is, is that if you're going to do a whole body cleanse, you actually need to target the specific organs. Okay. And you also have to target these organs in order, just like you see there's an order in space. It's called an organism. But you have to target them in order because you'll flush the toxins of one uh, organ into another and cause that organ to be really malfunction if you do it wrong. So what has been developed is, is that we have these um, whole body uh, cleansing kits and they're called internal cleansing kits and the colon cleansing kit and what it does is it primarily it starts with your colon because as I explained earlier there's a, there's basically layers and walls of, of old residue that have been building up ever since you were a child and they're in there and the, what psyllium husk do to, uh, to chime on what we were talking about earlier that we didn't finish off is that it actually scrubs the walls of the inner intestines but it's not just psyllium holes in this uh, in this pack, but that is one of the major in, uh, ingredients. It's also ginger and a couple other things, and then it's taken with apple juice because apple juice has a natural property of being able to clean out the bowels. So, um, <laughs> so what you're dealing with is is that it actually starts to scrub up against this uh, this plaque and begin to loose it from the walls of the bowels. And then when the bowels have gotten clear enough, they vibrate, and that vibration is like a healthy heat or a hearth that gets your system, gives your system the ability to begin to burn up other impurities that are causing different levels of disease. Yeah. So the next step of it is, is that, and this is not necessarily on order, I have to go and get it, but then you're taken through a liver, gallbladder, blood, um, liver, gallbladder, blood, colon, kidney, and uh, a couple more things, but you're taken through this other level of cleanse with the, cleanse with the sub supplements that are utilized to do that, meaning that nature has, of course, the actual ingredients necessary to keep the organs running fantastic. That's why if there was only, if there was any knowledge here, it was just the knowledge of nature. <laughs> And then what came after that is the synthetics and those who want to take credit for something that nature already did. Yeah. So, so how and are you feeling, though? Oh, man, like, here's the thing. Okay, this is amazing because, remember, I've been on these different kinds of fasts and cleanse. I've been on some of those, okay, I need help now fast because I'm in trouble, which, like, 10, 15 years ago, you know, you're fasting for two, three days because you're about to go to court fast, <laughs> right? So I've been on one of those fasts, and I've been on fasts where it's seven, seven days fast where you're just, you're only taking the supplements. I've been on 12-day fast, very similar to what Vipassana is like. And through all those fasts, and I even was at an institute for a prolonged period of time, where we fasted with the people that came in because they were coming in to get cleansed and, uh, and to get tuned up. And so we would fast with every group because you don't want to be eating in front of these people. It's just not very fun. So sometimes I would end up fasting for like three weeks out of the month, but it was always aggressive. Like I never really ever felt like I wanted to go and fast. 
You see what I mean? It was like too not, not enough food and the hunger feeling and the headaches and it wasn't working for me. This cleanse is not like that. It okay. actually has the ability with the psyllium holes and the rest of what's in that mixture when you mix it with apple juice. When you drink that, the only thing, only hunger that could be going on is a, a mental hunger, which is, of course is yeah. present. But you know, the body's like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're trying to kill us. You need to eat now. And then, of course, then comes the rest of the ideas of all the different things that you could eat. But, what's, but you don't feel necessarily that pinch in the stomach like, oh, my goodness, I need to eat, which is really what you don't want in the cleanse. In addition to that, because this psyllium holes and the rest of the stuff is super organic and they got the right herbs, these people really know what they're doing, it actually absorbs a lot of the toxins which you see come out and you can definitely tell it's toxic because it doesn't, it doesn't smell like you. You know, that's not me. That's not me. <laughs> so what happens is, is that this, um, it, gets, it gets out this, uh, these toxins. And, um, excuse me, I, I just kind of lost my head. Just trust me today, I've been having like a, a great time and just, <laughs> I'm laughing about other stuff from previous of the conversation and it keeps distracting me. But, um, but yeah, um, so what happens with it is that, <laughs> just me, I'm, I guess I'm overwhelmed with joy. Let's just say it like that because I'm able to actually explain it fluidly and it, and it, and it makes sense. But okay. So. I talked about, where was I? Just tell me where I was. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, I'll just, I'll just finish off with the psyllium holes. But what I was saying is that basically the, the psyllium holes remove the, the mucoid plaque from the internal walls. This causes the vibration to increase. And then once you get out of the colon cleansing, then there's at least five more areas that are targeted that are other organs. And then once those are cleaned properly, actually what I was talking about is um, how you don't feel hungry. Now I remember. Um, that came from thinking about food. No, I'm <laughs> but you don't, like, serious. Like, what I found out was the worst thing that was happening when I was going through fast that made it the worst is the headaches and this sick feeling. It kind of feels like you're, like, um, like you get, a, like, let's say, for instance, you went out to the club, you drunk the next day, and then there's that, that weird feeling, it tastes in your mouth like you're toxic, right? So it's that feeling when you're cleansing because when you do these, generally the other cleanse, you can take a lot of water in. But remember, if you don't even have the principles about distilled water, what well, you're still not drinking something that the body can use to clean things out. So thus, you're basically putting in, you're concentrating the toxins now. And this is giving you not only the bad attitude, it's giving you a lot of feeling of you're not passing it. Because all that stuff is supposed to get absorbed, and then that absorption is supposed to absorb the toxin. And then when you go use the restroom, it should come out. But if you're just taking some, just a regular cleanse or a fast that has nothing to do with that, then all this toxin is now bottled up in the body. It ain't, it's not going to come out with urine. So remember, like the toxins that are in the bowels, you can't urinate that. But that's where most of the toxin is because that's where your fecal matter goes. So there's something that has to go on with your, with your bowels to remove most of the um, most of the impurities from the system. So that's, you know, that's what you're dealing with. So during this cleanse, like, I only felt an issue, and this is what happened. Before the cleanse, I started getting this thing and I was getting tired of eating. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm going to stop eating, okay? I'm not going to go do the breatharian thing yet. But the reality is that I was getting, I have so much to do, but every time I have to go and prepare a meal, especially if it's prepared well, you're going to talk about two hours at least, right? So I was like, man, you know, this eating thing is just crazy because we got to just keep eating. We got to keep eating. And then I'm, like this one guy was saying on, that was on these uh, water fast, he come to a major epiphany that the body was like, he said he's got other projections that don't include the body. But basically what he's saying is that his whole idea is not to stay here in the body forever because you have to feed this thing. And you have to clothe this thing. And that leads into you having to get a job. And that leads into you having to get taxed. And that leads into a lot of other stuff. So you need to realize where, where the body's role is really in this. Like it really needs help. <laughs> so what happens is, is that you definitely want to make sure that that thing is in pristine condition so it doesn't have so much drag through the reality where it needs so many different support systems. But again, um, so what you're talking about is, is that once you get to... Um, to that stage of the cleanse, excuse me, I think I'm getting, I, think, I don't think I'm taking a break, so I'm getting a little uh, loopy over here only because I haven't had any water. So let me get some okay. the water. Okay. We're going to do one of those beautiful music breaks of yours, and then when we come forward, I guess, you know, we can kind of close this thing out just yeah, so that okay. I can, because um, remember, I'm still on the fast, but I'll keep going. Like, how, how long have I been going? Let's see, two hours. <laughs> okay, let, let's, let, let's go for a short break, then we can come back, and um, I think we've got about another 15 minutes or so. So, yeah. 
can finish off. Yeah, yeah, I'll finish off telling you about the fast. So I can get some water, and then I can actually remember what part of the fast I was explaining. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah. well, wait a minute. Was it the colon cleanse? Or... <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so we, we'll call you back in a bit. Okay, okay in a minute. So, okay, boom. I really don't look at this also as work. It's really been an amazing adventure. Like I, I came to Earth and I got the T-shirt. I, I say that all the time. But basically, I've, I've experienced so much here and had so much expansion that I'm not one of those individuals that I'll be leaving the planet like I didn't, Aww. you know, I didn't accomplish anything. <laughs> what, what's the name? Ara. Well, Ara. Hi, Ara. Well, she would be able to see you, but I had to turn off the the thing. I actually, I could have just muted that, but I, I got, you know, I, I forgot real early and I was like, oh no. Oh, okay. But yeah, yeah, so, but so just to close it off with the cleanse, like what I, basically what it does is, is that it, it goes through all of the organs. So generally when you're doing a cleanse, you don't really catch that much comprehension or comprehension with the cleanse, meaning that. It's like you do this couple things, maybe a liver, maybe a gallbladder, maybe flush outs and kidney stones, but ne nothing that's ever going to cover the entire system. So most people have, have not really experienced what it's like to be having all the organs working in pristine condition. And then, of course, understanding how those organs are connected to your vibratory frequency. And then when you're saying you want to have more current currency, at least a low level, it definitely increase first, which is, which is the physical currency. But what you'll also find with the spiritual currency, which really comes first, is that you'll actually have more astral projection energy, more travel and more expanse in your mind. So it just feels like you're, you're not, it just inside, you don't feel like you need space. You actually feel very comfortable and very secure inside. Okay. 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 So, the, so the key is, is not, not to do a, a whole body cleanse. Say you just do your colon on, on, on like one week, and the following week you do say your your gallbladder or your intestines or your liver or something. Yeah. Well, that cleanse itself is actually it's it's ordered, so um, because it is like you can check it out on the site. Um, of course, it's inside of the wholeness store, but um, mm. you'll see that it's it's really comprehensive. It's a lot of different package and tinctures and different things like that, but it's all put together. And then, uh, and then you just follow the instructions. But when you take the whole cleanse, it takes about 28 days, something like that. But remember, okay. the, the only the only part you're going to be fasting on is the first, I believe, nine, the first eight days. Excuse me, the first three days you're backing down your meals, and this is what makes it so easy. The first three days you're backing down the meals. The first day is three quarter, second day a half, and then the next day a quarter. And so okay. it, you don't actually stop eating cold turkey, which generally causes another yeah. big problem. So yeah. once you're taking down these meals, then when you start to fast, then the psyllium hole stuff is not that bad. You know what I mean? It's like it's somewhat fulfilling. And then so by the time you get to uh, then you have five days of this real fast where you're only basically drinking the psyllium holes and you can drink chicken broth. You can drink other things. But I only ran into some situation when I drank some broth. I just found that, man, my body just wanted to, uh, it wanted to cleanse, like it didn't want anything in there. And it, you know, I guess I'm using distilled water. They talk about you can even do the enemas while during the cleanse, but there's also things to help you regulate properly. Like you should be basically uh, evacuating, and I love these kind of words, three times a day. Um, okay. <laughs> and three or four times a day, three at a minimum. And, and it's, it's not like, oh, my goodness, I got to run in the bathroom. That, that's, of course, diarrhea. But this is not like that. It's more of you can you know you have to go and then you go. But so it's to me, it's the right way to do it. All this other stuff that I've been really uh, doing also in the past, like years ago with different fasts and cleanse, where it just it seemed to cause more problems than it started. And then it also made me not want to cleanse again. Like during this fast, I feel like. Really, I don't feel like I'll, I'll say this. I don't feel like I want to cleanse again. What I feel like is that I can maintain my body from here. Like yeah. it's like you got it from here. Because remember, the body obviously is able to take a lot of damage because you've gone through a lot. So and it's still running. So it really tells you that um, that you can actually start to um, clean it out, and then it'll respond in an entirely different way. Like it'll actually start to take itself from there. So basically what all this stuff does is it helps your body because it, it basically takes the immune system and it, um, and it gives an opportunity to actually really act. And then what the immune system does, it'll take the body all the way into the higher frequencies because that's what the body does. Like when it's all working in conjunction, remember it's mind, body, and soul. So what I'm saying body, I mean MBS. 
So when the mind, body, and soul begin to work in conjunction, the vehicle itself is fantastic. So that's why it wasn't like the physical human body was like some trap either. Like some people have gotten into that understanding now and saying, oh, you know, it's the whole physical life. No, 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 no. Don't get mad because, you know, this was another spectrum of, of us. And now all of a sudden we can't handle it. And what really happens here is that the body is a magnificent vehicle when it's tuned up properly. But just like anything that's mismanaged, even if it's a spirit, it can become very hostile and harmful to the to individuals and also itself. And because we're also connected, and this is where the major action takes place, is because it's all connected, we actually have um, when people act especially the ones that are supposedly in power, it affects us all. So to me, and the reason why I go at this so hard is that realistically, if you tell me that I can't, I can't activate, then you've already killed me. So either I'm waiting around for a slow death or for me to be up for me to reincarnate in a tent in Sudan somewhere. You see what I mean? Okay. So to me, it's a serious thing from a level that I know that, there's some stuff going on that takes a lot of courage and a lot of just accepting things to really be able to deal with. But in, in uh, growing and expanding beyond those things, I've found not only the ability to be able to give it people information that can enliven them, but I also found myself. So there's a major process with this that's so personal that as you're going through the experience and you keep expanding, things happen and that physically affect you. And that's why I do like to work with the physical body, because in many cases, the person's mind and their soul is already too clouded. But when you go to the body, because, you know, all the filters are, are, are dirty and you clean out those filters, then the person's perception about many things change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and this is all available on the website. For sure. This is uh, actually in the wholeness store on the on the website. You can get all the information. You can also download the books now and just check out the you know how the kit is set up and see how everything is timed out. And it's basically like clockwork. And then, you know, once you complete like right now, I'm surprised that I'm already at the end of the, the fasting part of the fast. Now, after this, you know, I eat. Like I got some sense, basically everyone needs to eat like, you know, you, you know what's going in your body. And it gives you a lot of pointers in those books of what to eat. And then you realize, especially, you know, here's the funny part. When you're not eating, right, you can, eat, you can think of brown rice and you're like, man, some brown rice would be good right now, right? Okay. So when you, but when you start eating a lot, then this is when you need these different variations of food. Like you're just a French Merovingian now. You need like every single thing that tastes like it just came gourmet, right? So mm-hmm. what happens is, is that we get used to eating all these ultra exotic, ultra, ultra toxic foods when really the body is a mammal. Like as far as on a physical level, it actually would eat the same thing as the cow, like vegetables and things, not meats and, and salts and <laughs> MSG and dyes and artificial, all this stuff. You see what I mean? So what happens is, is that you realize that it makes the body happy. And then that, if it, once you finally get things cleaned out, now don't expect to be thinking like this now before the body's cleaned out, but once the body's cleaned out, you realize that what makes your body happy actually tastes good to you because it's like a connection thing now. It's like, I like this, it, oh. it tastes real healthy. But it's not like you're going to be eating wheatgrass. That's not what I'm saying. You can cook up a really pleasant meal, but there becomes this joy in being able to facilitate your body with the right things because you're like, man, I'm trying to keep this thing clean. So it becomes the same thing as if you washed your car and then you go drive it out there. You're not going to go run it back through mud again, especially if you worked hard at cleaning it. So yeah. all the way around, this works for you because it ends up basically giving you the, the ability to start over. Mm. Yeah. Okay, guys, any more questions before seven starts? My, my question. Um, do, do you want to ask that question before it goes? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Okay, so if I can come back to um, uh, the question I asked earlier, mm-hmm. um, specifically in terms of um, prayer and meditation. And when I asked that, I had in mind, well, there'd be libraries of these books. You talked about prosperity, libraries of books on prosperity, mm-hmm. and, and it is from Napoleon Hill's work, The Mastermind Principle, to more recently The Secret, and this idea of operating on the same frequency mentally as that which you want to, to, to manifest. Mm-hmm. There's the concept of the whole universe and human body consists of cells, and then you have atoms and protons, electrons, neutrons, and you've got um, quarks. And, Bosons and then further up, you've got fluctuating energy information, uh, waves, wave particles. 
And uh, of course, in meditation, and of course, I'm a, I'm a great fan of having the binaural beats in each ear, altering from alpha, beta, and beta. Uh, there's the idea that the uh, Buddhist monks went over to a city in the States, and during the impact of meditation, the crime rate came down uh, considerably. I was hoping you could expand specifically on those, on those ideas. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for, for sure, for sure. So let's say I have the final question about high vibratory fre- frequency changes things. But basically what, see, especially the knowledge that I revealed earlier in regards to, because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of book-based, method-based, mental-based um, knowledge, and it generally leads to thinking, thinking, not really anything to do with the, the physical body or, or the spirit, because the spirit's too quick to think, by the way, like it doesn't, to, to understand each vehicle and what it's capable of doing it, that's why the spirit moves so fast because it's not doing what we call thinking. So what happens is, is that there's ancient methods which have a lot to do with how we really interact with each other and also how we interact with, other, um, with the opposite sex from us that become far more useful than what many of the organizations are just pushing forth, which is just about basically how to manifest a, car, a parking space at times, how to manifest positivity, or excuse me, not positivity, but um, what do you call this, uh, wealth, mainly. To how to manifest wealth in the life, as if wealth will bring happiness. And so what we find is, is that these, these methods that, um, that are being used by the traditional realities, such as Dianetics and in the secret, etc., need to be extremely analyzed for how much mental, how mental based they are, and they're really centered around the person getting more things for themselves. But that also becomes more things that just kind of are standing in between them and the full understanding of what's happening. So what I start seeing with a lot of these self-help courses in the secret and all these different things is that they were basically teaching people just like uh, there's always the carrot in front of the rabbit, saying, "Hey, you can make money off of this. You can be prosperous off of this, and then you'll be happy." But in reality, there's a whole deeper level of situation that needs to go on with the individual, probably based on how they treat the opposite sex. You see what I mean? Like, you can't just tell a person, okay, you use these methods, you can project, uh, you know, uh, positivity, and then that positivity is going to lead you where you need to go. Actually, what's going to happen is, is that the person may become successful financially, but now you've only accelerated the original situation which had to do with something based on nature, something that needs to ch- change within them. So now they just have more money for stakes, is what I'm saying. So what happens is, is that um, I think that what we're really dealing with as far as method is concerned needs to be looked at because we have these traditional methods of actually how to, uh, to expand. Now, me- with meditation must accompany the proper breathing. So meditation is not just sitting there and being able to just relax the mind. It's also being able to, to allow the energy and the current to move through the body. So in that tense, in most cases, from how most people see meditation, that's, that's not even nothing like the explanation that they generally get. So I find that when you see how the system really works with the breathing and how the energy comes up, that teaches a person a lot of things. But if the person doesn't have any energy to come up, then there's nothing that they can actually learn. So there's this whole cart before the horse thing going on with basically a lot of these belief systems and, and religious structures, etc. A cart before the horse, meaning that they pull up the cart, but not the horse, meaning that they're doing it backwards. So it's like, how can you teach someone to do something on the outside when you're only going to highly manifest what they've got going on inside? So when you get it, like an actor or a star or, or a football player has a lot of kundalini, but their chakras are inverted. So the only thing that happens is they become more of an effective force at doing backwards things. You yeah. see what I mean? So there's this whole empowering people with the, the carrot, the rabbit, the carrot and the, uh, the rabbit and the carrot way. When in reality, like, okay, pray, be good. God's going to reward you versus look good is an action. <laughs> like rewards are vivid. So not, you know, there's no future tense, past tense to non-linearity. So it's basically where we look at and we analyze exactly how we're seeing what the instructions are. And then we start seeing, okay, well, there's more premium instructions. Like instead of me, because it's, it's going to be, again, me washing the car only to drive it back through the mud again. Me doing it not in the proper order. You, you can't interface or properly genuflect 
with anything with a dirty filter. This is why any of the, the, many of the religious structures and the individuals that are in there that are saying that they found God only found something that was more tyrannical than they are. Because what they saw through, meaning the eye that they used to see God, which would be only, uh, what's happening with the person is what I'm saying. Like, we're not all stupid here. The person, the God is us. So what is this person seeing? They're seeing another variation of themselves on the frequency that they're really on. Where is that frequency coming from? It's coming from the knowledge in which they're ingesting that is telling them, you're separate. I'm the only one. There's one. You're not to be like them. Like all these different quarrels and qualms are what you really see. So that, that's getting me to, again, the, the master point within this entire conversation, which is see what it's done. The proof of wisdom is within the type of people that it produces. <laughs> What needs to happen first is there needs to be a vivid feeling. When you're body identified, the body is not going to hear any uh, special uh, sense, like special lucid ethereal conversation. It's too dense for that. So thus, the higher mind, you can't really hear at times if the body is too toxic. And that's why, they're, that's what I said in the beginning of the conversation, we're under attack by big business. Don't think that big business, who only created cars 120 years ago, is not pumping oxygen or pumping chemicals into this oxygen that is inhibiting many people especially that are not in areas that have a lot of trees from even getting air that is the air that's necessary to activate the vehicle but remember none of this stuff was taking place 120 years ago only when everything was just a cow and a, a camel and a, 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 a horse that which left no uh, a great no carcinogens and no gases you see what I mean but now that's the attack on our air but remember 100% responsible human is the one driving the car but now because all of us are doing it it's a quantum complex issue so this is why um, like I said we shouldn't wait long for whatever it is that we're doing to start producing results before we try something else that's all I'm saying I'm not saying that with any of these systems in, in way of belief especially by the way you understand it which is the greatest level of understanding the way you understand it is is going to give you the insight and the key that's necessary the only thing I'm doing is adding to that so what I'm saying is is that as far as the Kundalini with man that's where his power is he cannot overcome the serpent without it because it's actually connected in with the serpent and that's what the riddle is is that until you can overcome the urges of the fiery serpent then you cannot defeat the serpent you see what I mean? So it's telling you you're rolled in with the entire thing. The decisions that you make are based on, I mean, everything that happens to you is based on the decisions that you're making. It's, they're interwoven. And that's what's called the, the, the balance of justice. Okay? Yeah. And so, obviously, we are up for bad again. Those who of us are a comprehension, the ones who understand a part of what's being translated in the conversation today. And this is, once again, another point where you get the opportunity to take the information See how it fits with you. Research it on your own also, but really see that it's a lot of what's going on inside of you. Where you can stop it all, if you need no books at all, if you want no books at all, is in your intake. If you watch everything you intake, from what people say to you, to what you listen to, to what you eat, any orifice or portal that you have in your body, if you watch what comes inside of it, and you start to scan it and purify it, you will automatically boost your body to another level. But then when you start on this adventure, my friend, you will see that there is so much intake, <laughs> that every straight line is intake, every word, every symbol is intake. All of this somehow forms and fashions the mind. So what needs to happen, what I talked about with the harmony, is when the body gets to a level where it feels so harmonic that everything that it's interpreting is getting all the information from. This doesn't mean it's namaste, love and light, all is good. That's not what I'm talking about. It's extracting all the data that's necessary without using any bias. That's the only way you're going to get the whole truth. It's non-biased. So, um, that's what's up for today. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Seven. Thank, thank you, Seven. No I doubt. think you should go spend some more time oh, with yeah. Mara. I think baby's, uh, <laughs> baby's saying, okay, that's it. She's calling the show. She's calling the yeah. show now. <laughs> All right, thank you a lot and for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure, and I definitely hope to do it again soon. Definitely. definitely. Thank you for giving off your, your time once again, Seven. Really okay. appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> okay. We'll All catch right. up soon, okay? Okay, wholeness. Wholeness Also, to the brother there, uh, man, thanks for the questions and, and also uh, coming in, man. I felt that energy, man. I know when, you know, you have those questions, you want to get them answered and also interfacing with individuals that can answer those questions is awesome. So drop me an email, man, and I got to always put you in the loop as far as new information that's coming across because I do have a real live stream going on. 
Yeah. Yeah. I just want to share your, um, your, your website and everything yeah, else. Yeah, if anybody wants to find this to make it simple, it's at astroquest.com. And then everything that we talked about today, so that's astroquest, S T R A L. Q-U-E-S-T dot com. Very simple. And then anything that you want to find out about the cleansing, you can actually see us run through this cleansing at www.youngbody.org. That's www.youngbody.org. And, um, and yeah, you'll see actually we're still going to be shooting on Monday, but we're going to finish off the entire cleanse and it's been recorded. So some of those shows are a little wacky, I'll warn you. But you know, okay. other than <laughs> that, you not only get really comprehensive information about crystals, meditation, et cetera, and I demo, demo out a lot of things so that you can see exactly how to do it.